I want to welcome you all to the Hippy Dippy Roundtable. I uh, hope you all are going to have a good weekend, but first you have to go through this hell, and I appreciate you all <laughs> signing up for it. Uh, before we get into anything, I just want to say a few rules right off the bat. Uh, nothing uh, against terms of service. When I'm talking, I'm doing it purely to moderate, so if I'm talking, you immediately shut up. Uh, no, no, uh, prior, no circumstances outside of that will be allowed. If I'm talking, it's purely to moderate. I'm not trying to give my opinion, and it would really help. So if you can't hear me clearly right now, just go into your Discord and turn me up so you make sure you hear me when I'm speaking. Okay. I'm muted. Can uh, I get other intel than that, If you're having difficulty contributing, I know some Turk. people have difficulty with panels, raise your hand. I have a piece of paper in front of me. I will write your name down, and I make, will make sure eventually the topic gets over to you. Uh, it might not be fast. It might take time. But I want to make sure everybody's included. There will be intro segments and outro That's segments no, where huh? nobody talks during that besides the person I've called on to give their intro and outro. That will be about a minute, maybe two max, and then an open period in between. We will not attack people's um, uh, inalienable characteristics, the race, uh, sexuality, uh, stuff like that. We'll try to leave that off the table. And while being nice is not a rule... It would be cool if you were nice. Make sugar your favorite spice, okay? So we're now going to go into introductions, and we're going to start in the bottom right-hand corner with uh, Irish Laddie. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Irish Laddie. I'm a prominent member of Destiny's community. I'm planning on starting a stream soon, but probably won't get around to it until the beginning of 2019, you know? I'm uncontroversial. I'm young. I'm fresh. The world's ready for me. I can't wait to get started. Wonderful. Uh, I can't wait to hear his thoughts on the Israel-Palestine conflict. I'm going to throw it over to Turk. Hey, my name's Turk. I stream uh, science and tech here on Twitch and YouTube. And uh, lately I've been hopping on the Steam Deck bandwagon. So if y'all like those kind of content or computers and stuff, let me know. Uh, but good to see a lot of you people. I've talked with many of you uh, and gotcha, had banana. several debates with one of y'all. So uh, looking forward to some constructive conversation rather than uh, yell fest. So we'll see how that goes. Good luck. We're gonna now going to throw it over to Shoe on Head. Hi, um, I'm Shoe on Head. <laughs> um, I make YouTube videos sometimes covering like culture war stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to get into this. Uh, oh yeah, I'm mostly on Twitter. Um, but don't don't look at it. It's, you don't, don't have look to at it. it. It's fine. Yeah, just no. <laughs> I can just look at what Joel said about it, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. We're gonna throw it over to Pixel. Uh, hello, I'm Pixel. Um, I cover the news at American Insomniac Hours on Twitch. Um, I am too left for some, not left enough for others, and I was radicalized by the uh, Neopets stock market crash, um, which was True. a very big turning point muted, in my life. So, yeah, looking forward to some interesting conversations today. Be fun. I am as well. Now we're going to throw it over to Lecture Fan, uh, uh, one of one of our greatest good Christian boys on Twitch. True, I am a Christian. I do Bible studies on Twitch on Wednesday night. I'm a commercial litigation attorney during the day, radio talk show host on occasion. Uh, I'm a conservative all the way around. I've been streaming on Twitch a long time. I'm I'm different from everybody else here because I, or almost everybody else here, because I still support the U.S. Constitution and basic notions of human rights and freedom and liberty. Unlike me, I hate human freedom. Uh, we're going to throw it over to Joe Lewis. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I'm everybody's favorite um, pedantic piece of shit on semantics. But if you don't like that, there's anime titties as gifts on my channel. So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to follow me there. Um, that's good. If, especially if you don't enjoy pedantics. It's going to be a fucking shit show. That's but a thanks good. for having me. Yeah, Joe, we'll try our best not to develop a body count today. That's a good Now pitch. we're going to throw yes. it over to CounterPoints. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Connor. I run a YouTube channel named CounterPoints. I identify as centrist or center right. I like to fight almost everybody on everything all the time. I'm super chill until I'm not. So I'm looking forward to it. Let's have fun. I'm looking forward to you painting your Warhammer uh, figurines for half the stream. No, the, the big, the killers are out here. I can't be painting, can't be getting distracted. <laughs> Wonderful. Now we're going to throw it over to Aircraft Sparky. Hi, I'm Aircraft Sparky. Uh, on Twitch, I do a little bit of politics, a little bit of debate, draw a lot of cartoons, maybe draw tonight. We'll see how that one goes. Uh, I'm a nationalist, 
conservative. Oh boy. It's not about America first. It's about America only. And then we'll look at the rest of the world and try to oh help boy. them out. Uh, looking forward to a decent debate. And uh, we'll see how it goes tonight. Awesome. Nice to meet you, Aircraft. Good to have you here. Yeah, well, definitely, I'm... Lecture fan. Shoot, trying wow. not to nod and smile. Well, um, you can buy him dinner later. We're going to <laughs> now get into the first topic of the night. Now that we're all acquainted, is there any questions about the rules or any of how this process goes for anybody? Any questions? <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So we're going to go into the first topic of the night, and it is an oldie but a goodie. And that is cancel culture. Uh, obviously, a lot of people have a lot of opinions on cancel culture. Is it the righteous fire that holds people accountable? Or is it SJW woke scolds going too far for good uh, good old for the good old boys, just going after the good old boys. So I'm just going to go around. You can give your general opinions on cancel culture. It's always a relevant topic because someone's always getting canceled. And we're going to start this time in the top left-hand corner. Oh, well, I guess that would be me, right? So uh, cancel culture, it's bad. Uh, people say something stupid and suddenly their whole career is gone. Yeah, is it out of control? No, because, well, it's selective about who gets canceled. It's really more of a partisan issue. It's more about, hey, this person said something that's against my political deal and we just yeet them out of our out of our headspace forever. It's kind of ridiculous, but um look, I guess you gotta you gotta enforce social norms somehow. And uh people just can't handle things like the First Amendment and you know crappy uh discourse is what it is. Most nuanced counterpoints. Yeah, so cancel culture is very real. I hope that we can agree on that. The one thing that frustrates me about this conversation is I don't think we should view whether or not somebody is canceled as whether or not cancel culture exists. So for instance, uh, a, a few personalities on here are, are known to be controversial. They still have their ability to get paid. They still have their ability to uh, be public pundits. That's awesome. Um, but I think that they would also concede that sometimes audiences can be carnivorous and cannibalistic and they can go after the things that they love. And especially if there's, uh, e e you know, maybe even worse, it's when they go after things that they love. God forbid you even mention, mention people going after things that they hate, which is all the time. So Twitter mobs suck. People going after your employment suck. People going after your family suck. People releasing your addresses suck. Uh, operating in the public space is tough. And it's basically, there, there was this Reddit meme that I read earlier today about uh, fighting like endless waves of second graders. And then there's like a fourth grade boss. Uh, that That's what a uh, cancel culture is to me online when a, a Twitter mob is coming after you. So yeah, it's it's real. It sucks. Yield. Okay. Next, we're going to throw it over to Pixel Smixel. Um, it's really interesting because I, I think there is definitely something that exists, but I think a lot of the times the concept of cancel culture is kind of weaponized by people to um, mask bigotry and to be like, oh, I got canceled or whatever, and kind of use that as justification or like some sort of attack against free speech, which... I, I, I don't think that is that being said, I think it's a larger conversation around political correctness. It's a larger conversation around um, how social media works and how engagement on social media works, because it has something to do with um, like the conceptualized the conceptualization of identity politics, because. A lot of the More time nervous. when somebody is Not getting cancelled, the reason so many people keep dogpiling on has more to do with their, themselves than it d has to do with the actual issue. So I think in with co cancel culture, it's just a bigger conversation and it's extremely nuanced. So I think this will be a... This will be an interesting conversation. But yeah, I, I, I probably agree that there is something there that is real. I just think that it can be weaponized um, by people to kind of mask uh, different things. So, yeah. Okay. Now we're going to throw it over to lecture fan. Okay. She doesn't believe in free speech. Got it. Okay. So I agree with Connor and aircraft that cancel culture is real and it's bad. The problem is 
Uh, that's just a, a little part, tiny part of what the left is doing today. They don't believe in free speech anymore. They don't believe in free thought. You're not allowed to have your own thoughts. And it's not just it's not just canceling people. It's literally censoring entire ideas and stuff on social media. And you see this happen all the time. This is 100% from the left. It's all Democrats doing this. They they believe in if, if they don't like something, it should be banned. It should be censored. Uh, if if something they, they think is misinformation, I they'll, they take like it this. down. Doesn't matter if it turns out to later on it it's was true kind of uh, it's a very 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 dangerous uh situation we're in right now where we're living in a society where we've turned our back on free speech we've turned our back on free and open thought a lot of we we, we no longer are allowed to have open discussions of ideas free you know it, it, i think it's really telling that these leftists they think oh if you if you allow a racist on a, a platform then everybody's gonna agree with them and stuff that's not what happens what happens is they get shouted down and so free speech is good Open discussion of ideas is good. Censorship and just banning and purging things just because you don't like it or disagree with it is bad. Okay. Now I'm going to throw this over to Joe Lewis. I don't know, man. Like, I'm full doomer. If you want to say the N-word, say the N-word. Say it in public, say it in private. Say it on a plane, say it on a train, say it in the terrain. But don't be upset about the consequences that happen after that. I mean, for fuck's sake, like, I'm, I'm the full support of of the freedom of expression of ideas. That way we don't have to worry about microaggressions and fucking having to analyze all these like coded speech that individuals do. Just let people fucking play basketball. Let the free market figure it out. That's where I'm at on this at this point. The world is catching up to me. Okay. Next is going to be Shu on head. Um, so I think cancel culture is very real. And I think it's a big problem, even though people like to pretend that it's like just a little online thing most of the time. But I think it's an issue and I've said it before, but um, cancel culture is going to become sort of like a workplace issue in the future if it's not already where it's like you can get fired for you know old Facebook posts and stuff like that and people like in general are just like walking on eggshells they don't know the correct terms to use they don't know if they can joke or not and I think it's like because Trump on stage has um even talked about cancel culture like oh they want to get you fired and stuff and that like speaks to normal people i think um and that like scared me a lot like seeing like a fucking president get on stage and talk about like cancel culture um so that was crazy but i do think it's a really big deal like we see like journalists getting fired um for like saying things that are out of context that's another thing like context like context be damned with cancel culture that's the biggest issue i have with it um like there's a difference between like if you straight up call like a black person the n-word or something or if you're like quoting something and say the n-word or something and like that like the context is just irrelevant and that's a huge issue with cancellation cancel culture i don't know wonderful now we're going to move over to turk yeah, so I actually agree with Joe here because, uh, you know, we should be able to freely say what okay. we would like to say and that if we say things that are bad and the community doesn't like it or the the private institution doesn't like it, you get to deal with the consequences. I think that's what the definition of cancel culture is to some people. And it's unfortunate that we can't, like Lecture Safan says, you know, have open discussion, have conversation. Sure, it could be heated, but most of the times it's best to have you know, constructive conversation. And unfortunately, when you step on people's toes, make people feel uncomfortable and use language they don't like, uh, that triggers some and they unfortunately go on a war path of trying to uh, be weaponized, kind of like what Pixel said. So I kind of agree with uh, parts of what everyone here has said so far. And I think uh, we could have a pretty good convo on this. Okay, and Vosh? Yeah, so um, I think that cancel culture is a real thing. I think the issue is that the definition has expanded to meaninglessness, you know? As I understand it, when I talk about cancel culture, I'm talking about uh, members within a community attacking their own and gatekeeping and uh, purity testing because you accumulate a kind of clout by maintaining the purity of that space. This happens a ton on the left and happens a lot on the right too, but like there are people, especially people on the right, who will turn everything into cancel culture. Boycotting is not cancel culture. Criticism is not cancel culture. Uh, there are so many things that get roped into it. I mean, there are politicians crying about can Didn't uh, Matt Gates cry about cancel culture 
he was a child sex trafficking uh, suspect. I mean, God, it's like, okay, sure, you know. I you, you can't believe they canceled Napoleon and exiled him twice. They, like, you can fit anything under this umbrella. If we're going to talk about the problems with cancel culture, we need to talk about really complicated sociological stuff, like online culture and alienation from social contact and the ways in which we make friendships and how that can really influence our perception of the people around us and what we can do to influence these spaces. But we can't turn it into this huge, all-encompassing thing because, as uh, free speech haters like LCTR fan will often repeat, by accusing people of being anti-free speech for engaging in fair and simple criticism, you're actually enforcing a chilling effect on criticism. You're actually saying that by exercising your First Amendment rights, you're hurting the First Amendment, which is ridiculous and a common tactic from authoritarian governments. So let's not do that and focus on the actual prize. Okay, that's intros. We're now going to go into an open period. Uh, let's, <clears throat> what I'm trying to do from now on, instead of just throwing it out to the open, whoever grabs it, uh, people raise your hand if you want to speak at this point, and I'll throw it to them and they'll start us off. And so Counterpoints has his hand up first, so I'll throw it to Counterpoints. Yeah, so I was just going to say that, like, I, I understand that the, the expansion of the definition can make it ultimately worthless. But at the same time, like, we all, we also have to understand that, like, definitions evolve over time. I, we Half of us have seen uh, oh. Contra's cancellation video uh, where, you know, we, we talk about the, the history and the etymology and the source and the description and, like, all that kind of stuff. And that's great. I love 10 head takes. But at the same time, we also have to realize that, like, if you want to have that nuanced conversation, I'm down. Um, but kind of what most people feel is that at any any moment on Facebook or Twitter, a hot take can basically have a dog piling effect of people, you know, trying to ruin your life, basically. Uh, so I, it's I understand the internal definition. If you want to use it for the sake of conversation, just so we can be using the same words at the same time, that's totally fine. Um, but I do think we need to talk about like this in general fear and anxiety. And then to kind of reinforce this point, too. Yeah, there's a part of me that says, fuck it. Like, you know, we used to be in tribes of, you know, 30 people and cancel culture used to be like, you're an asshole. So we're going to kick you out of the tribe or we're just going to kill you. So maybe this is like the sociological version of social media, where if you do something fucked up, everybody and their mom is going to come after you. So the lesson is don't do fucked up shit in public. Uh, but at the same time, there has to be a balance to this because, you know, we try to dial in like lynch mobs in the past. Um, so we shouldn't have a digital version just say, hey, this is the natural consequence. Uh, so I'll leave it there for now. Okay, you guys are all kind of missing the point, and Vosh is totally wrong. This The definition hasn't been expanded, and we're not just talking about general societal concepts. What we're talking about here is big tech, big powerful tech companies removing people from social media because they said something the left doesn't like. That's that's a very specific definition. It had, doesn't have anything to do with small individual communities fighting their own. It has nothing to do with general free market principles. We're talking about a very specific thing here of big tech dominated by leftists in Silicon Valley, censoring people and banning them from social media, which is now the de facto public square. This is the area where the American people engage in public debate and exercise their free amendment rights. And all you guys that want to talk about it this way, you guys just like it because big tech is on your side and big tech is banning people that disagree with you. So you're going to come up with all your little excuses and ways to talk about it. But that's what this is. This is big tech banning conservatives and censoring conservatives. And you guys can twist it however you want to try to make it sound like something that it that it isn't. Listen, I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> wait, can I, can I, can I go? Wait, can wait, I, wait, so wait. Pause, 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 pause. Okay. Everybody talked at the same time. So, Electra Fan did earlier throw something at uh, Pixel's way. So, I think it's only fair to give it to Pixel first. Can I just say, because I am not against free speech, right? Like that you know, uh, categorization of me was a little uncharitable, but like, okay. Um, I would just like to say that um, if, if that's what you think cancel culture is, right? That it's just these people who have, why are these people being canceled in the first place, right? Because you do have to talk about nuance in this situation because there are things that people say that like should not be on the internet. There is, there are things that are said that actively marginalize people. 
Point proven. I'm having a fucking conversation with you right now. So, so where's the fucking point proven? We're having so the conversation. So where's the nuance from Twitch's perspective for banning Lauren Southern for posting the topic of what the debate was about <laughs> as her stream title? Where's the nuance? It was against there? terms of service, Turk. And, and, and also, I think that has content. to do with inclusive language in general. And the entire right? panel should have been banned for the stuff they were talking about. Well, I mean, they got reported and politically provoked got banned, who was the panel host, and then Lauren suddenly got banned for the conversation. The other people on there didn't have um, content or platforms, if I remember. It was what, Lauren Winsky? Right? What's that? They were streaming it, though, right? They were Lauren Winsky was streaming it. Stream- that that, that well, motherfucker Twitch has, always been, Twitch has always been inconsistent with ban. There's not a social media site on Earth that's consistent with its bans. And that I don't goes know. to lecture fan's point. Well, well, well no, because that's not... Ca- that's well, wait, inconsistency has nothing to do with cancel culture. That's just the nature of websites that have tens of millions of users and a really limited, like, moderation base. When we Wait, when we're talking about cancel culture, are we talking about TOS on websites? Is there cancel culture against, like, people who, like, spam gore pics and the comment replies underneath politicians when their accounts get deleted? Is that cancel that, culture, or is it just okay to have TOS sometimes unless you're mad at it, in which that's case the then it's cancel culture? mechanism of the cancellation. The, then the how do you undergoing distinguish, underpinnings of it cause the cancellation. Then how do you distinguish what's a legitimate use of TOS and what's a cancel culture use of TOS? Uh, people that disagree with what she put as her topic of, of her stream, you know, there's nuance to it. It was the topic of the panel, right? <laughs> uh, you know, you could entirely, you know, f- uh, report that as a viewer and say, this is yes, bad, but people that are on the other channels that are doing the same exact same panel, they won't flag those other channels but, but, because but, they but don't you'd have to, it. hold on. You'd have to articulate who uh, all streamed it, right? Yeah, like there's a difference I, between streaming the again, content and Twitch then posting is, it Twitch later is on the channel. All the time, I've been banned from Twitch longer yeah. than all of you put together uh, for <laughs> it, for the duration of my career. Okay, I don't think. Well, I think it was very fair. Twitch, don't do it again. But when we're talking about distinguishing between legitimate and illegitimate enforcements of TOS, how do you know which one of them is cancel culture? Like, I mean, t- take a Twitter ban. Like, so people get banned on Twitter for posting gore sometimes, or whatever. I think that's cool, but that's just because Twitter disagrees with them, right? I mean, at the end of the day, morality is just about disagreeing with people who have different ideas for what's acceptable online. So how do you know which one of these are acceptable and which aren't? Okay, one second. I'm going to give Turk some time to respond since I was two people. Then I want to throw it over to counter. It it all boils down to perspective, right? And y'all will say a bunch of conservatives consider that that would be considered cancel culture. Other people would say, yeah, I violated terms of service and I got a temp ban or a perma ban based on the consequences of my actions. I think... Uh, consistency would be a really good and moral thing for all these private companies to do. But unfortunately, they only react to the mechanisms that trigger those actions to happen. And unfortunately, many people on the left like to report people they disagree with for things that are out of context, going back to the nuance of what some of these topics are. And, you know, Twitter and Twitch can only do so much, right? They, they, can, they only have so many ways to look at all of these different channels. Counter? Yeah, so I, I was gonna say, like, obviously we're we're on Twitch.tv, so maybe <laughs> I don't I don't fucking know if we're capable of having these conversations. But when when we talk about figures like Lauren Southern, very specifically, the reason why she was quote unquote canceled uh, for this specific issue was you know surrounding uh, trans identity, and and then the other conversation uh, that kind of like five years ago was absolutely taboo, which I think Pixel would agree is like something that uh, potentially harms people would be uh, demographic replacement. Well, now demographic replacement is mainstream. Tucker Carlson is mainstreaming it. And it's pretty clear that like the Pandora's box has been opened. This debate needs to happen. It's already in the mainstream. So whether or not we, whether or not you want it, the conversation is here. So for me, the, the point is like, we can keep like dodging around it or we can have better conversations about it. And here, here's the other thing about it too. I get it. Listen, I, I spend all day getting spammed 1350 because I said that we should improve society somewhat. That that was my hot <laughs> communist take today. So I, I get it. Conservatives are fucking assholes. But but the truth is that like if you, if you want to bring them to the table, if you want to be understood, if you want them to understand these concepts, these highfalutin two hour contrapoints concepts, then you need to boil them down into synthesizable and understandable uh, you know concepts, and then you need to communicate them. Oftentimes by fighting uh, on TV or on uh, Twitch TV shows like this. This is the way that a lot of people get a small amount of education while also being entertained. 
Uh, so yeah, I, I think we're off of cancel culture and we're on to censorship, but, but this is where I would be anti-censorship and I would want us to think about how we're platforming these ideas and how we're having these fights rather than whether or not we should have these fights at all. Air, aircraft, you raised your hand, so yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so look, I, I think uh, when, it, when you're talking about things like twitch.tv, this is not the place to have certain conversations because Watch the digital never say a fucking will come word after the whole you in a heartbeat she's too timid say to actually the wrong say anything. thing. Only it, is, it is something that you see on this platform and many other platforms. Uh, the conversation that was being had with Lauren Southern and uh, politically provoked and mouthy infidel and all them, that really was more of a YouTube type place. It really shouldn't have been done here at Twitch because it just opened Lauren Southern op up to that attack. Uh, this is selectively used, though. It, it truly, when you see this online, you are seeing specific people who have done certain wrongs in the past or maybe has said something that hurts someone's feelings. And so a digital lynch mob goes after them in order to try to deplatform them. If you can't actually challenge the ideas, just silence them altogether. And it, it's kind of sad. Uh, but what's even worse than that is people who go through and dox others and then attack people at their regular job. And this is something that everyone's avoiding for some reason. It is disgusting, but this happens all the time. And Sparky, it, but you're the individual who said that you wanted to post pictures of my tweet at my place of employment, and you said them on stream. Ooh. I actually, actually, what I said is I said I think it would be funny. The clipping, if I was it to would get, be funny? If I was, some, get, if I was to get a billboard mm. and put some of the crap you say outside of the school you work at. Now, I'm not going to go through the trouble to actually look up your stuff because I'm not that guy, dude. But it is kind of funny because there's a lot of people who use cancel culture as a weapon, and it tends to backfire on them when that happens. Do you think it's responsible to expose that idea on the internet and your fan base? There's all kinds of ideas that are exposed in the fan oh, base. Oh, don't, don't, take, don't do time. that. That's the shit I do. Answer the question. <laughs> do you think it was appropriate for you to do that? Oh, so it's okay for you to do it and not me. Damn, Joe's taking oh, man. When did I say I was going to post billboards of your shit. tweet at your place of you employment? That's what you would do. That, no, no, that's what he said. He no, said that. I, I didn't say that. I said it would be funny that if, you know, because he happens to be a teacher, some of the rancid crap that he says online, if he got posted on a billboard just outside his school with a picture of him. Dude, I'm just saying that a like, teacher. One of the problems. Kids. One of the problems with these. One of the problems with these with this online do. mob wait, is wait, that wait, wait, you okay. can't control. Wait, 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 sorry, Joe. Okay, there's two of you talking at the same time. I just want Joe to say what he's saying, interrupted, then we'll go back to Sparky. Just want to keep some order here. And I'm writing Vosh down. I saw you tried to talk. Listen, you. like. You, you, as, as someone who like enjoys i'm a converser of lecture fans twitter he posts some fucking anti-lefty bangers but at the same time he never gets any likes he gets like five likes per tweet and it's like what the fuck we got people like identifying as deers getting like a hundred likes and five thousand retweets and it's like why is electro fan getting the love it seems like there's a possibility to cheat the algorithm to push certain content up there. And something that concerns me in your language is that like, okay, you say like you wouldn't do that, but do you really trust your, your fucking community to not like participate in that kind of behavior? We talk about this all the time. Like anytime, like we have a crazy debate with somebody and then it gets like really like yikesy and crazy. It's, we hit the point where it's like, wait, guys, hang on. Do not bully this individual because we don't know what type of actors are in our community. So I'm going to ask you again, like, do you like, so you're in support of what she said there? Like, do you think that's dangerous to say like, oh, like, even though I'm not going to do this thing, like, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Once I got you, I, sorry, I missed your hand. Uh, my mic was in front of your face. Uh, oh, so no, I've moved my mic. Okay. You, but <laughs> we're going to have Sparky respond, Vosh, then Shu. Uh, look. You can't control your your community. I can't control mine. I sit there and say, look, yeah, I said this, ha ha, it's in jest, moving on. So if somebody you does that, should you be held responsible? No, because people are responsible for their own individual actions. Mm, the Trump take, got it. All right, cool. No. Oh, oh, the Trump take. You mean the personal responsibility take. How, how hard is that, man? If you can't control yourself and know, you know, who are you responsible for? Yourself, maybe your children. But you are responsible for other adults and how they act. Okay. I want to move this over to Vosh, then Shu. Yeah, it's just, we're never going to arrive at anything approximating reasonable discussion on this if we keep conflating, like, tech companies banning people, which they do purely for business reasons. They are not doing it because they have an ideological bias one way or the other. 
they're doing it because they have to create TOSs that maximize the productive potential of their websites. And enforcing those TOSs are the only way to like actualize whatever effects they're going to get from having those TOSs. It's as simple as that. The people who lead Twitter or Twitch are entirely uninterested. They do not watch these panels. They don't care what we say. They only care about what an incredibly well-paid team of market analysts tell them is the best direction forward for positive growth on their sites. When it comes to like interpersonal behavior in communities, I do think there are like bad elements here, but we also have to recognize that a lot of what people call cancel culture is just the natural process of socially ostracizing undesirable values. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. It's the only way we morally grow as a as a as a species, as a civilization. And sometimes that process is done in ways that I don't think are defensible, like doxing or whatever. And sometimes it's done in ways that I do think are perfectly defensible, like saying people are mean names. We have to be specific with what we're talking about here. What do we think is unjust? What specific thing are we having an issue with here, you know? Sure. Okay, so Vosh basically said what I was about to say, but um, I don't know why we're conflating cancel culture with like big tech censorship. I've literally never heard that happen before. They're two completely different things. Cancel culture is like, when a mob of teenagers comes at you Stole and like contacts your her. employer or your school or whatever tries to get you canceled and then big tech censorship is just that it's like big tech censorship like i believe like i'm super against like big tech censorship i always talk about it so it's like annoying how this guy's over here like the left it hates the left. like no i always talk about how big tech censorship sucks like i think that the internet should have some kind of like bill of rights thing going on but yeah, completely, two completely different things. And I just wanted to say that a million years ago, um, but I didn't know how to interrupt. So. <laughs> no problem. They're not, they're yeah. both, they, they both, they both involve basically people's lives being ruined because of just words they said. I'm getting That's banned the point. On That's Twitter? the connection. It's, it's literally just, you're saying words and then whether you get fired from your job from a mob or you get banned off of Twitter, uh, it, it's all it's all a anti-free speech sort That's of mentality how words that we're work. starting to see more If you more go up and more. to your boss that, and say you fucked like... your mom, you're going to get uh, like fired too. Words lead to consequences yeah. for words. Vosh, That's not anti-free speech. Look, look at what's happening. Donald Trump is not allowed on Twitter, but the Taliban are. I mean, this is He'll absurd. You're, you're justifying that and defending that. That's I mean, pathetic. Hey, who, who led an attack back. on the like, Capitol? Makes wait, you think, wait, wait, huh? Wait, that was directed towards Vosh. I want Vosh to be able to respond to that. Yeah. Look, again, not like I like I said, the um, uh, TOS is always going to be enforced selectively. Uh, nobody cares about the Taliban on Twitter. Like, nobody. Everyone cared about Trump on Twitter. Trump had just led an attack on the Capitol. Simple as that. That's why he got... If Hey, if he'd laid low, probably wouldn't have gotten banned at the end of his presidency. But he didn't. Didn't have that, uh, you know, self-control, which I heard conservatives are a big fan of, but, you know. The other thing that I take issue with what Vosh said is, is he seems to think that like having the mob and big tech like censor undesirable values is how we grow as a society. That's the opposite of truth. The, uh, the way we really grow is you have everybody engage in open debate and open discussions and you don't ruin people's lives just because of something they said in a selective way just because you disagree with the politics. And Vosh, Vosh is trying to... Specifics, you're trying man, to, please. You're, you're, you're Life trying ruined because they said a equate, thing? Come on. You're tr you're trying to equate two different things. You're trying to equate uh, basically like some horrific statement that gets somebody fired from a job in any situation when we're not talking about that. We're talking about people's lives being ruined for just saying something minorly Specific, controversial. Those please, are not the same God, thing. Please, I'm do begging you. you. Let's, let's your fan. Do you think it was a good thing that William Shockley was basically ostracized by the entire intellectual community and society abroad? Like, did you support that? Do you support like him being when he got his ideas tested in the marketplace of ideas they got cast out is that like an okay thing i don't i don't know what, i don't know wait do you don't know who william shockley is no okay so william shockley was a physicist who was the first individual and the biggest yeah, proponent know, of eugenics and eugenics the and eugenicist <laughs> ideology and thought and then like he ch he got challenged not only by the scientific community but also by just every, a lot of people on the planet and they basically were able to prove that eugenics is bullshit the that's idea... great that's what science is all about the funny thing sure. is, is now, nowadays scientists are, are being used to shut down dissenting viewpoints and that's the problem too is where you're not allowed to dissent you're not allowed wait, to how are you not allowed to wait hold, wait, wait we have to break the dialogue for you hold on let your fan wait let your fan wait wait who's information you get banned for disinformation let your fan so 
Academic journals have stopped printing articles from people who have pressed disinfo for centuries, for longer than the country you live in has existed. So how exactly are you not allowed to disagree with the scientific consensus? What are you talking about? I'm talking about social media, posting on social media. If you, you say you something that goes scientists. against, if you say something that goes against whatever the Democrat leftist narrative is when it comes to whatever, whether it's vaccines or COVID or whatever else, you'll get banned. Weren't you talking and about that's scientists? A part of, that's Not a part about... of this big whole censorship cancel culture process that we're talking about. Okay, so by cancel culture, what you're saying is you can't complain about the COVID vaccine not working or that COVID's not real or that it's a fake Chinese hoax or whatever on Twitter. I thought you were talking about scientific like discourse, not about talking about science. There's a No, right. I'm 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 drawing a connection between all of this. I'm saying this is all a bigger picture. Look at the bigger picture. This is all leftists like you justifying censorship and shutting down free and open debate. I'm making a comparison you can, you between can, all of yeah, these different is, things. This is why I'm trying to figure out where you're at, Lecture Fan, because even despite the fact that you, eugenics is clearly not true and scientifically inadequate also not true misinformation we're still having debates about this right now and it seems like and then at the same time like would you like i guess i'll word this this way do you support the debate of eugenics in 2021 do you think that's a conversation we ought to have knowing that it's misinformation and not true i i don't think it's a conversation we ought to have but i wouldn't ban somebody for having it that's the difference i don't think that's even a conversation really that that mainstream if you look at things like uh wuhan lab leak wait wait wait, months, wait 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 that made no sense what do you mean by mainstream what do you mean by main? what are you right. talking about who, that's who, not who mainstream who's talking about eugenics man um You're politically provoked heard politically are provoked they? three times in the past eight days hmm. i mean i think it's a dumb thing that i don't think anyone is really questioning now if if people over there are doing that that's on them i think it should be allowed to be said but there's people who are being quote unquote canceled for saying something like Wuhan should they see Lab consequences Leak. for spreading that type of misinformation? No. Oh, okay. so wait, wait, what? hold on. Let's if, let's if you, you just hold, you just you just backfilled your own take. Wait, you just backfilled your own take. Hold on. Wait. If you can't hold the media responsible for the misinformation that they put out on a daily basis, what do you mean hold them responsible? They turn around and they stealth they stealth edit their articles later. Can you articulate what you mean by responsibility a bit? It, what do you mean? What, what are you asking? It's your words. I, I, I don't understand them. Can you like please rephrase? Oh, English. Um, so here it is. Yeah, Look, English if sucks. Someone wants, if, someone has, if someone has to, if someone wants to talk about you, uh, eugenics, uh, that's sure. your, that's your latest kick. Um, so if people want to talk about eugenics, <laughs> I think, I think people should be able to talk about it. If it's misinformation, you know, people should actually, I don't know, read up on things that they are listening about actually see if what people are talking about is legit and true and does it actually make sense they can come up to their own own decision the idea of gatekeeping what is misinformation and not misinformation said Wait, theory. do you, do you I believe this time on are you a postmodernist or do you believe in empirical facts because it's not gatekeeping what is or isn't misinformation it's what is misinformation it's uh, it's not up watch. to debate the stuff that's no, banned wait, on Twitter wait, for like COVID wait, misinfo hold on, hold on, is misinfo. Okay, so uh, I do want to throw it over to Shu because she hasn't had time to talk. And we have Counter, Turk, and Pixel on the list to speak as well. Years ago, in like the early oh, 2000s. One last thing. I also want to clarify, we all agree that Politically Provoked is a backyard mud wrestling show. We can all agree there. Shu, you can continue. Oh, sorry. Um, so beef. like, Vosh, listen, years ago... It was common, like, fact that we had, like, you know, WMDs in fucking oh, no. Iraq. So how do you know, how, how could you tell what's misinformation and, like, what's the truth? You don't know. Why, why not? Why can't people discuss this stuff? Because, I mean, you can run down, like, the anti-empiricism line forever. But, I mean, even back with the WMD stuff, it was incredibly shaky <laughs> testimony that was largely disbelieved even at its time. Whereas the COVID stuff is as close to empirical Ooh. fact as anything could ever really be. I mean, you can, wait, hold on. There's legitimacy to what she was pointing out, by the way, because the aesthetic of truth or the political appeal of truth can often, has often been used as a way of shutting down legitimate disagreement with like um, powerful institutions. The problem is you'd have to make that case like individually. And the reason I disagree with the WMD stuff uh, being banned from discourse is for two reasons. One, was never really substantiated. And for two, 
talking about whether or not there are WMDs doesn't really have much of a meaningful effect in the real world for average civilians. Whereas with COVID, the misinformation on COVID has a death toll every day. So in that case, we can both substantiate the fact that it's misinformation and indicate there's a consequence to the propagation of the misinformation. So those, are, I think I, you can qualify like a meaningful difference there. Wow. I, I need to address this, can I, please? Uh, counter your next on the list, so sure, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. Um, I, I'm gonna try to peel this apart while still trying to be as charitable as possible. Um, no, uh, the majority of the media outlet, I, I'm a fucking boomer, okay? I'm old as shit. I'm probably five to 10 years older than the rest of you. So the the, the point being is that like a majority of the, the media institutions at the time were parroting WMD, WMD, WMD. We were literally having debates in class about WMDs and, and the, the evidence for it. And the people who were taking the dissenting opinion me, by the way, we're getting fucking yelled at because we weren't patriots and we were fucking, you know, uh, we we wanted to eat the French fries instead of the freedom. But where fries, was the evidence? Like, oh, where was the evidence? Well, the evidence was actually that we, oh, God damn it, we're opening up a can of worms. But that's what um, I'm saying. There wasn't evidence. It was well no, repeated. There, if anything, no, the but, WMD thing should have been what was banned from proto Twitter Twitter, right? Because that was the okay, misinformation. But uh, hold on, hold on, Vosh, because this is the, this is the thing. It's like, the, this is why I'm very happy that you're in this debate space, uh, you know, again. So uh, basically, no, the reason why the the Bush administration knew that the Iraqis had weapons of mass destruction is because of something that I want everybody to Google. This isn't conspiracism. Uh, the Riegel report, R-I-E-G-L-E -E report. We used dual use, uh, we sold dual use chemicals to Iraq during the 1980s in order to prop them up against Iran. The reason why we do they had WMDs is because literally we sold them the we WMDs. Sold, yes. Yeah, we didn't we didn't want uh, we didn't. Uh, basically, I, I would check this out. I'm not being a conspiracy theorist right now. And then not only that, but basically uh, the only reason why we didn't continue to support Iraq, because if you look at our record, we are obviously allies with a bunch of assholes all the time who do nefarious shit. Um, the reason why we no longer supported them was because they attacked our allies. They attacked Saudi Arabia, they attacked Kuwait, they attacked Israel. So they were pretty much showing that they didn't want to be a team player. And we kind of knew that we committed this grievous moral sin during the 80s and 90s, and we were trying to clean up our mess. The One of the things that you said that like um, I don't think is correct, you were saying is that like um, the reason why you would substantiate the difference between like uh, why these perspectives matter or whatever is because uh, the COVID has a daily effect on like material harm, whereas the WMDs doesn't have as much as of a material effect on harm. I would say for the average American citizen to be charitable, you're probably correct. But at the same time, there was probably like three quarters of a million to a few million people that were sent to Iraq over the course of 20 years. We launched a like, you know, $2 trillion war of which this was 50% of the theater. Uh, probably a few hundred thousand to a few million Iraqis were killed under this lie. Um, so dissent is kind of important. And then this is, this is like the logical implication of what I think what she was saying and to maybe a lesser degree what lecture is saying is when you take like a moral arbitrary position where you're saying like oh well in the name of the public good i can shut down dissenting opinion um then what will not be worth shutting down in the public sphere because there's always going to be a public interest especially for anything that's consequential and then but then to turn around and attack the right because i'm doing my enlightened centrist shit um so okay, the we fucking gotta, we gotta move on to the next person. okay all right i gotta I'll respond just yes. Okay, uh, I'll give. Uh, I'll try to wrap this up. But basically, I don't trust the average person to make up their own decisions. I think the average person is a fucking idiot. And not only that, I don't think that like objectivity or empiricism is like a good way to base civil discourse. We're all on Twitch.tv, and my personal estimation is that eighty percent of Twitch.tv is cults of personality. Twenty percent is information, and that's because the average person is an asshole. So uh, no, I'll you forgot. Two percent right are ASMR microphones. Okay, true. So I'll leave it there. Yeah, okay, the Vosh thing, and then Turk and Pixel after. Yeah, I just want to say there's still like a meaningful categorical difference here because there's just no comparing the evidence that was present prevented, sorry, not prevented, presented for the existence of WMDs in Iraq compared to like the legitimacy of the COVID vaccine or COVID. We're talking about like a couple papers and report on the fact that chemicals may be present in the area that could have been used to make WMDs after they disarmed weapons in accordance with the protocol. And that compared to like every single scientific institution on the planet across borders agreeing on something. When it comes to whether or not something is correct or incorrect, like to claim that COVID is a hoax would be like, I mean, it's like flat earth tier shit, you know? So you can argue there are blurry lines when it comes to the ability to substantiate misinformation. And I totally agree with that. But the COVID stuff is as far into the factual fact area as you can possibly get. 
and in terms of like the harm of allowing the misinformation to propagate, um, the um, I, I I don't think that whether if Twitter had existed back in like 2001, it would have had much of an effect on whether or not the Iraq war happened, considering the protests at the time. I'm just saying that right now, like every day people die because of the information, the misinformation that they get from certain media sources. So it seems to me like when we're talking about whether or not in this case, adding COVID misinfo to TOS is valid is a matter of death counts. And from my perspective, you'd have to argue so well for the right for people to be wrong about COVID on Twitter that it would have to stack up favorably against tens of thousands of dead people, hundreds of thousands, depending on how severely you think the curve might have been mitigated if we were responsible with this info. And that is a tough argument to make. Okay, okay but wait, wait, counter. We will. I will bring it back to you later. I'll write your name down, but I want to make sure that people who haven't talked in a while get to talk, and that's Turk and Pixel. Turk? Yeah. So I think the more uh, Vosh, were you finished? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I think the better example here, because, you know, COVID is, you know, scientifically proven, we've been living through it through two years. And I agree, if you think that COVID's a hoax, and that's like flat earth, I agree with that. I think the more applicable thing here is the Russian collusion thing, right? Because we lived a t entire period of our lives where we kept getting uh, the information that, you know, Trump colluded with Russia, and Trump did that stuff. And we did special counsel, and we went through all the bells and whistles in order to find that uh, there was not evidence of Russian collusion. Now, I, you know, I don't want to debate about that specifically, but the fact that information was gated behind certain media outlets, and if you disagreed with what those media outlets said, you were then, in fact, a conspiracy theorist or an alt-information kind of person. That was never added to TOS. Well, right, but if you go keep going down the rabbit hole of how extreme you're pushing your version of the information, you could get canceled because yeah, someone would say, oh, this guy's saying blah, 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 and then flags you for whatever, you know, because it, it's all gated behind information. And if your information is counter to what mainstream news outlets are saying, you are subject <sighs> to scrutiny of the mob. Wait, I, I, I really don't like this because, to be clear, the overwhelming scientific consensus of all scientists on the planet does not equal the media believes something. The Russiagate thing was an investigation. The, 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 these things are completely incomparable. Not only was this never added to some sort Which of Which is why I wasn't trying to make the comp comparison to COVID. I well, I, then I, well, I, a better I, strong man than that? Or? Well, no, I, I, well, I agree you shouldn't, like, we should be skeptical of media narratives. I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm only saying that with regards to the COVID thing specifically, there's an argument to be made on the basis of human lives in favor of curtailing the spread of misinformation. I think that's a very special case. I haven't, you know, I'm not advocating for like um, every media narrative to be instantly made like factually uh, unimpunable and then everyone gets banned if they disagree, you know? I think it's a special case here. Right. So you're still you're still arguing against freedom of speech in that situation. Not, and the and Constitution does not hold on. Read you're the, entire, you're a hold lawyer. On, you're a lawyer. It doesn't apply to social media. Can I? Can, hello. Can I finish? Okay. okay. Well, I was going to say you, you can, you're you can literally up, then I throw literally. The pixel, then we'll bring yeah. it back over because you need to talk. Vosh's, okay. Vosh's we'll entire over, argument. Promise. Vosh's entire argument shows that he doesn't understand why we have free speech because the underlying reason why we have free speech is because sometimes what society says is completely true turns out later on to be false oh and that's a lot more dangerous than than uh allowing somebody to say something false and so your entire argument shows that wow we've lost like civics 101 like the underlying reasoning behind having free speech you were literally arguing against free speech Okay, it's Pixel, not... wait, Pixel, then Vosh. I just want to make sure Pixel gets to talk. She's been waiting for so long. Oh. Uh, uh, no, 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 it's fine. Um, I have only one little thing to add to this conversation anyway, right? So if, if, you're, if your free speech is based on the concept of truth, right, and being able to spread your truth, there is an argument that exists for sometimes the truth being not withheld from the public, but being presented to the public in a certain way. And that is because humans are predictably unpredictable and it is a very interesting conversation to have, but that is what also spurs um, the distrust in government, which you get being like, oh, they didn't tell us the facts straight up about this. And when like, 
it, they really were, like they were, um, but they weren't doing it fully at the time because of what it would mean to like the public discourse or what Tucker Carlson would say or what somebody on CNN would say, right? There is an argument for that. There is an argument for like the um, curation of information to the public. Okay, Vosh and my next people on the list is Aircraft Counter and Turk. Vosh, you can engage. I, I just want to say, look, we're not talking about the First Amendment, which has nothing to do with social media. But even if we're talking very broadly about the right to say anything anywhere on any platform of any company, we've already agreed there are exceptions to that. There are even exceptions to the First Amendment. You can find them in any law book that you open up, whether we're talking about shouting fire in a in a, a, a movie theater, threats That's of not an exception. death threat. Those are literally exceptions to your First Amendment no, rights. No, that's not. Be, that's bad law. You can. It's bad. Wait, I'm sorry. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, have fun traveling to the Supreme Court and expressing your disagreement. You can take it with them. All right. Um, there's no, that. Any First there's, Amendment lawyer knows that's the that's the incorrect cliche. You're gotcha. wrong. Gotcha. Uh, harassment again. Death threats. These are forms of speech that we have agreed are cringe and are therefore banned. Uh, propagation of abusive materials regarding children, another form of free speech that we've decided we'd rather do without. It's just a very dogmatic argument that people throw out there. Um, and they usually do it to like avoid thinking about any issue like this. I mean, you're going to call free speech on this. Uh, you called free speech earlier on, on uh, uh, telling people's bosses what they said on Twitter. What isn't free speech? Actually, um, Vosh, actually, the shouting fire in a crowded theater, do you know where that originates from? Get up, Jude. Get up. I don't actually know where that originates from. Um, it was in a court of law. They tried to put throw a socialist in jail for being anti-war. So, not a good analogy. <laughs> wait, is that? When, are you... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold yeah. on. Whoopsie. Shouting. Why? Not I... a good analogy. <laughs> wait. But who determines what misinformation is? See, this is the problem. A lot of people will sit there and go, well, this is information. That's a conspiracy theory. This is a conspiracy theory. Who actually gets to determine that? Son of a bitch. For three and a half, four years, Russian collusion was complete misinformation, and it was never a conspiracy theory. It was it was canon. It was law. The Hunter Laptop story was completely Where was it law? Suppressed. Wait, what law was it, the... Russia collusion. Uh, I, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Law. Yeah, it's a side of law. Come on, dude. Court Calm down. Public opinion. Lab leak. Lab leak. When we're talking about things of like COVID, just over I mean a month ago, was a complete conspiracy, and you would get destroyed on social media and kicked off for even uttering such things. Oh, China. But there, China made but there, a mistake. Is, there is a reason that was played down in the media, and it was because that would have been used for so much xenophobia, right? You have to you have to be able to think like where this information is coming from and how it can be perceived by the masses, especially in America. Oh, yeah. That your media is so incredibly like dichotomous on like us v them. It's like this you side. You live v in a this country side. that banishes immigrants to an island. Don't talk oh. to me about what America is. So he's, he's racist. Don't engage. He's I, I racist. Don't engage. Can don't engage. That. I condemn that. Right? Like we can get to the immigration <laughs> conversation next. All right. I'm looking forward to it. But that like I criticize my own country. But that but, is, I'm talking about how your media functions. But right. there are certain people who actually legitimately question things for reasons, true historical reasons. There's reasons why the African-American community is actually questioning things like the COVID vaccine huh. because, hey, oh, no. they actually I talk things talk, like, I, I, I don't I, know. I you talk about black people. Wait, 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 I mean, okay, these, are legit, these are legit wait, things to air actually crowd. consider. Air. Okay. Okay, I might be a left winger, but today I believe in monarchy. Okay, and when I, <laughs> I, I, I need to say a word once, and that means shut down. Okay, I don't need to say it two times or three times. Okay, all you need is one finger to count the amount of times I need to talk before everybody shuts down. Okay, understood. Now, I'm gonna throw it to Joe because I'm actually interested in what Joe has to say here, and then we're gonna go. And I'm, I got the list still. Counter Turk. I'm just interested. I want to hear it. No, it's just that I, I just knew that Aircraft Sparky would say some dumb shit about black people. Like he like he knows exactly about vaccine hesitancy in the black community. But it, it's it's whatever. I just thought that was kind of funny. He's really fucking stupid. So we can we can keep the ball moving. Salient cool. argument, King. Yeah, uh, yeah. Strong, strong argument there. 
Okay. I'm saying you don't know so, shit about vaccine hesitancy in the African American community, so don't fucking talk about it. You know you're talking out of your ass. That's all I'm saying. Whatever, you can take the L whatever, and we guy. get the ball moving. Whatever guy, man. Look. Yeah, take the L. I'm take fight, the L. I'm fighting a it. historical take, truth. take the L. Take the L. Take the L. Wait, wait, wait. Take, take the L. Take the L. No, no, no. Take the L. Don't bring no, up Tuskegee, no. you dumb fuck. No, no, no. Oh, don't no, bring up no. Tuskegee. How dare you bring up a historical, actual he loves it. horrible great. thing great. this country did? I love this. Uh, you look, look, look. Can we? Okay. We have a look. Okay, I feel like we've run yeah, back to this every single thing. Okay, okay, every person, including <laughs> conservatives, even though they pre pretend not to, acknowledge that there are types of TOS they find acceptable and types of exemptions to unlimited free speech that they find acceptable. All it would take is like 30 seconds of having those beliefs questioned for anybody to agree with them because absolute free speech, like advocacy, is ridiculous and self defeating in a number of ways. So we, we stop running back to this like image of pure free speech and actually talk about it. nobody has answered this having social media disinfo on covid leads to people's deaths how many like mm -hmm. corpses do i need to stack up in a pile before that becomes more worthwhile than the abstract freedom to talk about how your fauci ouchie gave you cancer on twitter what's like what's the fair i mean if you if you think the answer is infinite that there's no amount of death and destruction that would warrant any kind of TOS enforcement on misinformation, then accept, then take the W. Like, just say that. Don't, like, run around it. Just accept that. That an infinite amount of death, a, a road of corpses paved with the bones of people who listen to the bullshit on social media is, is worth it. Just say it. Okay, or is there a it. limit? Okay, all right, I'll say it. Yeah, so, so basically what I would say is I, I think about the balance that we have right now is fine. And I would say that a bubonic plague or uh, Ebola with the lethality of bubonic plague or Ebola, but with the spread of COVID would be when I would feel like reeling these things in. But I think that still doesn't change the fact digits, that people can be six. instinctively and reflexively defensive of civil liberties and civil rights. And I think it's appropriate to do so. And I don't mind uh, this tension or this power. I, like, like, I don't want power to be concentrated. I don't want people to use emergencies as reasons to, to curtail uh, freedom to the infinite degree. Because, you know, it's the, it, it's the balance between liberty and security. That's what we're talking about. And actually, uh, Pixel, you know, not to pick on Aussies or whatever, but I would, I would see that as you guys lean way too fucking hard on security. I, I, I think that, like, arresting people for social media posts, I think that the, the exact line that you use is, like, where this information is coming from can fuel xenophobia. I think that's true. I absolutely think that's true. Um, but I also think that it's being used as a pretext for state officers to show up to people's doorways to fair, and basically Australia either intimidate or arrest them for their social media posts. So the and that that's kind of leads into my question. Um, so in in the public sphere, like in, in IRL, which I know none of us have touched grass in probably like a decade. So I, I'm talking about abstracts here. But there are people, and they live in the real world. And in the real world, if you use certain words, you do get in trouble. So, for instance, uh, assault is putting somebody in fear of imminent uh, battery or, or, or like aggression against their their uh, against their their person. Same thing with aggravated assault; it's with a deadly weapon. Incitement to a riot that's a crime. Uh, stalking is a crime. Harassment is a crime. Uh, these are all crimes that we put on uh, we put on the public sphere, but not necessarily on social media. And then I kind of want y'all to answer this question. Do you think that the online space should be criminalized for uh, harassing speech? And uh, basically, uh, earlier in the question, probably a half hour ago, you were asking, like, what's the line? I know doxing is the line that should be criminalized and punished. Uh, stalking is cyber stalking should be criminalized and punished. Um, incitement to a riot, incitement to murder. Uh, but then the question is, how do you enforce these laws cross state and cross national boundaries? And then I also have a question for the lefties, because you love your fucking guillotine memes and you love your fucking shooting landlord memes. Is this incitement to a riot? Is this incitement to a revolution? Uh, and then at that point, do you think that your own behavior should be criminalized because you're attacking entire classes of people and you're uh, you're putting violence into the social sphere? I don't know if that's wait, a proper wait, 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 sure. I want to. Why that not? Directed. Wait, that was directed toward P a part of that was directed towards Pixel. So I want Pixel be able to respond before we finally get it over to Turk. Pixel. Okay. Well, first, before you go and generalize this, I don't actually use hyperbolic speech. Even though I am on the left, I actually don't use hyperbolic speech because I sometimes find it is not conducive to like 
proper conversation because the nuance gets lost and I am here to talk like I enjoy nuanced conversations. Um, you have to understand the situation in Australia. We don't have free speech, right? So this conversation, it's it's like free speech isn't the same in Australia as it is in America. It's it's not in a, we don't it's not in the constitution like that, okay? Um but in regards to the protest, which is what you brought up, um as somebody who has covered the news literally every day for the last two years, um, seeing how these things evolved and where they ca came from, it's very much um, d like the police are being used currently as a deterrent um, for these illegal processes, uh, uh, protests, because we have a big problem here with vaccine supply um, and these protests, which has already um, seen happen, uh, we, we don't have any COVID immunity here. We are trying to get our population as vaccinated as possible before accepting the endemic nature of COVID-19. So these protests are actively putting pressure on our healthcare system, on all sorts of systems, which is why um, they are currently illegal because we are in a state of emergency here in Victoria, because our, uh, our systems would be overwhelmed. And in Australia, which is dissimilar to what has happened in America, um, we took a path where we uh, have been trying to not overwhelm our hospital systems. Like all the news I see from America is that your hospital systems are overwhelmed and we are trying to mitigate that. And the people who are protesting currently are a mix of people who are angry that they need to be forced uh, uh, some in some uh, careers to be vaccinated, but mixed in with right wing agitation. It is it's not it's not left wing agitation like. It, it it's it's like Avi and Meany, like it's yeah. Could just okay, arrest but, people uh, for uh, being uh, Australian. Can I, can I clarifies wait, it a little bit. And I, Vash, wait, I would like to address this. Wait, I want to. I gotta throw it over to Turk. He's been waiting for so long. <laughs> I have to. And, I, and then I gotta get Connor, on your list oh, there, Dylan. I'm a, I'm a gentle and kind person, Connor. You got up up to a minute. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Okay, uh, number one, sure. Australia needs to get good. Uh, you know, basically, that, that would be my number two advice. And then my second point would be, listen, I know that uh, you're not a hyperbolic lefty. I'm talking about deranged, sociopathic weirdos who use hyperbolic uh, memes like guillotines, and they, they're very extreme about their geopolitical takes. You know, nobody in this room, nobody who's, you know, nobody who's used uh, hot takes on Twitter before, okay? So uh, you're, you're good, Pixel. Yep. All right. Yeah, so I, Pixel, I unfortunately think it's time for Australia to kind of wake up to the what's going on in the world. You know, COVID's going to become an endemic any time now. So any, we have, we have. Yeah. Okay. So what you said might have been just misspoken then. So that's fine. It's just it seems really counterproductive to keep holding on to this hope that you're going to be able to stop it you know we've tried no to no, no 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 so so we're, we're not anymore right that we have transitioned now we have plans state plans federal plans to transition to the endemic nature of covid what we okay. are trying to do is because we skipped the earlier variants from the lockdown that i was a part of Imagine. right like i literally stayed inside for a very long time um because we skipped that thing no one here has natural immunity so in order if if we let the delta variant go we experience a covid pandemic but almost even more contagious and more destructive than it, it, it could have been anywhere else because it is so much more virulent and so we need to vaccinate our population while also tempering that with like uh, you know not killing people by overwhelming the hospital systems like new okay. south wales where they're having like thousands of cases a day they have eight hundred ICU beds to give you an idea right okay. so like that's not a lot there, there is tempering here I'm not the person who makes these decisions but I'm glad we have moved to understanding that COVID is endemic okay. I'm sorry okay. if I didn't one, one speak that clearly. We, we we gotta kind of shut this I'm, down soon yeah, yeah, yeah. Because can, this I, is no can I answer counterpoints this is about COVID wait no, I want to yeah, okay. respond yeah so Pixel appreciate the clarity thank you very much uh, I want to bring it to more of a light-hearted uh, instance of cancel culture and that's when uh, that one police officer on TikTok made a you know funny video where uh, uh, he was about to go and arrest somebody and like he called up uh, you know Kobe Bryant not Kobe Bryant he's dead uh, King James and was like hey what should I do okay all right whatever and he ended up getting uh, suspended I don't know if he got fired or not so it's like is that considered cancel culture or is that no, considered he made a hot take and was against Neither. policy 
It was against police procedure. The, they they clarified that in the suspension. Okay, so that you that's not considered cancel culture then. The, the it was against his job to use his phone the in a public well. manner like that. Okay. That's why he got suspended. It wasn't some mob bullshit. Come on now. Well, and can I, I expect can that dumbass from Sparky? Come on. Yeah, okay. military oh, no. example other than COVID than we've been going on, and I'm trying to get this conversation going back to this whole cancel. Well, oh, yeah, I can get it back to this conversation because I want to pin counterpoints on something. I love you, friend. I love you, friend. So I say oh, this I in all too, and all the niceness. So this is gonna get a little weird, a little quick. Uh -oh. I don't think you have the oh, no. best place to stand on, considering that you platform suspect sushi alongside Samantha Banana, especially considering that within that conversation, there was a level of hesitancy that remotely resembled positivity towards the Proud Boys. So I'm what do we curious. talk about here? What's the criticism? I'm curious, I'm curious on your thoughts on like inciting a riot as it relates to you having a conversation with suspect sushi. That's one of the oh, let me. That. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, I'd love to address this. So I'm, I'm, whew, damn, um, hot take coming in. So basically, I love balance of power politics. I am perfectly okay with, uh, you know, dumb fuck right lefties, dumb fuck, yeah, dumb fuck lefties uh, posting guillotines on Twitter. I'm okay with three percenter memes, uh, you know, boogaloo memes, all that kind of bullshit. Because basically, what what I think is that power should be distributed through as many factional groups as possible. That way, in a coup is as unlikely as possible. Oh, that is the true um, centrist and ba take. Basically, that that's kind of where suspect Stucci, I viscerally disagree with his uh, politics. The Nazis and what I think should tankies, be. So, for instance, like um, I, I think I share this opinion with some people. Them. On this panel, the world. I don't necessarily care if the government is overthrown by the people. I care about why. And I don't think that installing Trump as a new king is somehow going to preserve the republic. So my objection to the January 6th riots is not because I'm against rioting or balance of power. My objection is because I don't want a fucking king. Um, maybe I can elucidate that more. I don't know if I answered your question. I, I will also comment, and I don't usually do this, but I will comment. Counter, didn't I send you a message about that video saying, yo, this makes Suspect Sushi look really good? And he was like, oh, it does? And then you took it down? Yeah, be because like I don't I don't want to popularize this idea or this narrative. Um, I'm sy I'm sympathetic to constitutionalism. Um, if I, I'm if I, sir, I wanna I, I wanna keep you on the feet of the fire here. If I search this, am I gonna be disappointed? Not on my channel. Okay. I mean, well, I just want to answer the tweets. hypothetical right. that got posed with regards to uh whether or not you think the state should be coming after folks for guillotine posting. And I'll just say that I think the First Amendment, like, exemptions that are carved out at the moment are fine. It's illegal to make threats of immediate violence. It's not illegal to generally guillotine post, whether you're doing that as a Nazi or as a tanky or an Assadist or anybody else. Now, that doesn't really speak to TOS stuff. And being honest... I wouldn't really mind that much if, like, Twitter TOS was a little bit more consistent with the ways in which it banned people for general violence posting. You do get banned on Twitter if you general violence post about, say, black people, but there are people who do that about white people and it doesn't get banned. And at first, I thought, you know, we can make arguments about utilitarianism and consequential harm, and, well, this group is punching down, this group is punching up. Uh, but my past two and a half years in this platform have taught me that the kind of lefties who make jokes about mayo side are shit and not doing anything for the movement anyway. So maybe taking a break Rat from Twitter would be the... Uh... Yeah, radical centrist, Vosh. Yeah, that's um, my radical some centrist some perspective. <laughs> just some housekeeping, I found it. Um, just, just so that we're publicly about this and it's your, to your attention, Connor. Sure. Um, yeah, it's on the site called Alt Censored. Okay, um, I, I, don't, I don't run you know, Alt Censored. If, like, if you want to use the mechanisms to, to make sure, like, that's protected on your on your side, like, feel free, you know? Well, can, can, I, can I also just talk to this okay. really quickly? Also, after that, I want to throw it to Lecture Fan. He's been waiting very patiently. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to probably, after whatever happens after Lecture Fan speaks, we're going to go into the next Do topic. you guys like my centrist okay. take? Um, I, I am going to fail I really this have changed my mind uh, on I, this I think most people know that years. I have talked to Lauren Southern in the past couple of weeks. Um, I'm going to, you know, talk to Suspect Sushi. Uh, when I'm politically provoked, talk to Big Papa Fascist. Um, I don't want to hide from these ideas because I, I don't like a lot of these ideas and i want to fight them in public if i fail so optically right to uh, properly challenge these like things in, in like a, a tactful way that i think furthers the cause Wait, of kind of bringing the do temperature down right and you know bringing the country together then like i'm going to consider that and what i choose about? to post to my channel uh but i don't want to be afraid 
of taking these ideas on even falteringly because none of us are perfect debaters. We all have fucking shit nights. We all have shit content. Uh, so I don't want to be afraid to take on ideas that I think are nefarious just because it might end up in a loss. Um, I, I, I want to have a little bit more balls than that. Well, it's not necessarily in a loss. Like we have to, I think and you probably would agree with this too, is that we have to be careful if we are going to enter into these spaces with these ideas that we hold people to the feet to the fire. Right. I think it's something you would agree with. And I try. Yep. Looks All right. Yeah. I was going to respond to pixel and, and Vosh doing the COVID scaremonger tactic about how many bodies are going to die. How many people have to die. And, I, and it's Don't just get like this stream ban. This, this, this stuff, this stuff about like, Oh my gosh, people are dying. Therefore we should censor misinformation. It's like, you know what? A lot of people actually believe in dying for freedom. A lot of people believe in give me freedom or death. A lot of our, our founding fathers were actually willing to die for freedom. And so your whole idea that, hey, if somebody's going to die, then we need to take away the freedom because it'll save a life is is preposterous. So and thank right God now. we still have Americans that are willing to fight and die for freedom. When Joe Plummer well, chokes to death on his own vomit with a... Jesus wait, 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 wait. Wait, I'm, I had to say wait almost six times there, okay? That's five more than the amount of times it should be necessary. Okay, so who wants to respond the to truth. that? Uh, I'm too horny to respond. Andrew, too hand, horny raise to respond. your hand if you, if you want to okay, respond I, to that. Yeah, okay, I do. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'll, go, I'll go for Vosh, uh, and then Connor, did you want to respond to that? No, I'm I'm actually good. I'll I'll just do yeah. all my stuff in we'll outro. Do Vosh and then we'll wrap it up. I just I asked you to like specifically say like how many people have to die before you think it'd be worthwhile. I the counter like actually addressed it, which I mean I disagree with him, but credit for actually answering it. But like the Patreonism bent is so cringe. Like there are people who believe in freedom and also crippling our nation's economy and society by refusing to do the bare minimum to prevent the spread of a d disease. You're like, all right, damn, you know, you know, people used to carpool. To like fight Hitler back in the 30s. I can't believe we've fallen so far. People were planting like tomatoes in their garden so that they could would take less from the rations at the grocery store. And you're, now it's not, like you're not even talking about the same. Now it's thing. like, hey, I'm, get a I'm, shot, and they're like, no. Nope, you're you're then talking they about all censoring die. people. You're talking. You're ta now. You're talking about something different. I was. I was addressing your argument that hey, people could die from COVID misinf misinformation. Therefore, we should censor and purge. It takes and ban zero effort to not post COVID misinfo. Stuff. We're not. We're not talking about what you should or shouldn't do for COVID nineteen. And the the issue is, I don't. It, it, like I will never agree with censoring and purging something that people disagree with and violating people's free spe right, sp speech rights. But you just do think we should all get vaccinated, right? I all think right, that yeah, should okay. be a personal choice. Yeah, okay, between I, people I, I, I agree. yeah, no, it's okay. Just, just but, checking. Okay, are you are you are you prepared to disclose all of your private medical information and talk about how you feel about the vax? And yeah, are you going to absolutely? You I'll talk absolutely. Give me give me a, a a book to write it in, and I'll publish it. Yeah, I don't care. Also, whether you get vaccinated isn't your whole medical info. I'm not asking you whether you got a boil on your asshole, Lance. I'm asking you whether or not you got the vaccine that like a billion people have already gotten. I mean, this is kind of a collective experience. Like getting your it's like getting your 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 first you know like flu shot or, or the chicken pox. It's like it's, I don't know how like private this is really. We're all doing it. Okay. So we're now going to wrap it up. That means everybody's getting about 30 seconds to a minute to have a final statement. We're going to start in the top left hand corner with aircraft Sparky. The next topic will be the refugees. Uh, awesome. Well, look, when it comes down to a cancel culture, cancel culture is bad. The the fact that people go out in these digital lynch bobs trying to destroy people's lives because someone said something they didn't like or they claim they claim something is misinfo. Uh, when we've seen a lot of times, even in this past year, a lot of things that have been claimed to be misinfo happens to just be well the truth. It just wasn't convenient for whomever whomever was trying to suppress it at that time. And we're looking, we're looking at things such as lab leak theory and things like that that has gotten people in a lot of trouble on social media. Although cancel culture isn't just about social media. Hey, I'm it's getting about um, the actual destructions muted. of someone's um, personal It's not TOS to talk about the Wuhan lab leak means theory, right? Of doxing and whatnot. And I think most like of us you agree, can talk hey, about that's, that on Twitter. that's pretty bad. But yeah, um, what do you do to fix it? Well, um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, some people are some people are want to defend it completely, and the idea that the bare minimum to fight a disease is going to be something of which, hey, you you've got to give up some of your bodily autonomy, something that you would want to fight for for other things. I think it's been hypocritical, but that's another story altogether. We'll talk about that. 
one day in the future, hopefully. Okay, next is going to be counterpoints. Yeah, so I, I'm okay with disassociating cancel culture from big tech censorship. I'm okay with these two uh, two ideas being absolutely separate. However, I, I think cancel culture is real, and just because the target of a mob attack, a digital mob, doesn't lose their income or lose their job, doesn't mean it doesn't suck ass. Doesn't mean that it's not part of the toxic culture. We do have to decide how we want to tackle this. Whether we think this is best to our own devices, and maybe we can evolve as a culture, or if we want to start imposing legal consequences the way that we do in real life on digital spaces. I am super hesitant about imposing legal consequences on digital spaces. I actually really do enjoy the freedom. Uh, a lot of the conversations that we talked about tonight were the balance between liberty and security. These things are not necessarily opposed virtues, but they do come in conflict. So um, I don't mind being skeptical of power. I don't mind being skeptical of anything. Uh, but that being said, the average person is a fucking asshole and an idiot. So uh, yeah, you know, ultimate centrist take, yield. Okay, next we're going to throw it over to Joe Lewis. Yeah, I mean, I, it, was, it was interesting. No one took the no one took the risk to see about the how cancel culture works and testing the marketplace of ideas with the N word. So, I mean, we'll no, another day we'll try it later. Um, Joe, I thought about it. Yeah, I know some some people really think about it, especially the person right above me. Um, so one of the things I I think would be a great change would be readjusting how algorithms work. Because I think that I think one of the things that we can agree is that algorithms can have very poor consequences and like we can change how social media posts are boosted. We can change how things go viral. This is something all the tech companies can do, um, but it's there. They got to They got to do it. So that's going to be kind of a problem. And I guess for lecture fan, I mean, it just sounds like in his language that he disagrees with Jacobson v. Massachusetts, which is fine, I guess guess but we we have exceptions to freedom freedom of speech and freedom of expression and freedom of exercise all these things within the first amendment um and really all of our amendments we have exceptions with, with all of them but it seems like his contention is certain um whether it be supreme court decisions or certain practices policies and procedures that he doesn't agree with which again it's like live your best life but i think it's fucking disrespectful that when like we had this like owed to patriotism that only two people immediately saluted and we have somebody with underneath me with an american flag in the back it's like come on now like we gotta if we're gonna be consistent with patriotism it's gotta be all the way so i think that then any time the lecture fan invokes patriotism tonight we should fucking salute and that's my hope but let's see what happens okay if anybody just wants to use their ending statements to sing the entirety of the american national anthem i will allow it i'm gonna pass it over to lecture fan all right, first of all, Joe, thank you for the shout out to my Twitter account. I really appreciated that. Um, also, okay, so I, I obviously there's a difference between a leftist Twitter mob coming after people and getting them fired from their job versus big tech censorship. But my, my point is that it's cut from the same cloth. They're very similar. They both they both come from this cultural mindset from the left that says people should you know not be allowed to speak. They sh they should suffer severe severe consequences for just saying something that the left disagrees with. Not even something that is all that bad and. Or, or saying something that actually they think is untrue, but then turns out to be true later on. Uh, I, I, I believe in, you know, the, the mindset of what our founding father said, which is if you're willing to give up your freedom just for a little bit of security, uh, then you deserve neither and you'll get neither. Okay, now we're going to throw it over hey, to Pixel Smixel. Say, can you, do I have to be patriotic? Obviously not, because I'm Australian. Um... Wait, I what, think do your people even have a national anthem? anthem? <laughs> uh, no, it. I was doing your living in the land down Sing it. Okay, okay, okay. This is about okay, emus. Okay, no, 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 no. Okay, yeah, so I, like I, le I, legitimately, um, I, I'm pretty sure even this is gonna show you how much American essentialism like is exported to Australia. I'm pretty sure I practiced singing the American national anthem as a kid because it was just like a more of a bop than the Australian one. Like that's how like fucking Patri patriotism like filters down into your shit little brother Australia. Anyway, not the point. Um, cancel culture is, it, it, it's obviously we all struggle to kind of define it and even have like the conversation on one particular level. Um, but I think what we should all agree on is that we need nuanced conversation. Social media should be encouraged for a nuance, nuance um, uh, conversation and 
there is a difference between um, cancel culture when it is being used actively to vilify someone and when it is used to stop um, people causing harm. There are people actively being like, oh, my God, I got cancelled, when they are actively causing harm to potentially hundreds of thousands, millions of other people, right? And and so I think there are lots of distinctions that we have to draw and it's on a case-by-case basis, but um, I think... Uh, w- it's a conversation that we need to keep having. And I think we all just need to improve our at least online communication, media literacy and media communication as well. Anyway, that's my TLDR. Okay. Next, we're going to throw it uh, over to shoe on head. Uh, cancel culture is, is bad. Um, and <laughs> when I think of cancel culture, I don't think of big tech. I think of like just mobs of people online who understandably feel very powerless in the real world and so they get off on this like power trip um where they can feel like they actually are doing something as opposed to doing absolutely nothing because like we have no fucking power right we see all this shit happening we have nothing but what can you do oh you can call out someone for saying something racist or edgy or whatever we could do that um so i feel like it's a power trip for a lot of people to do something like that um and it's really fucked up and the uh, I hate it and the whole culture surrounding it is just extremely toxic and poisoning um and yeah big tech censorship is is bad too and like i said we need some kind of like internet bill of rights or something like that that doesn't get people fired i mean um like banned just for being like political dissentant or something and like something nobody brought up i'm surprised like the rightoids didn't bring this up but people there's like uh right-wing pundits and people who are like their banks are like canceling them. They're they're like, hey, like you can't use this bank anymore. Uh, you like, you guys have seen that, right? Like, that's pretty. That's weird. Like, I don't know. I don't agree with that. Like, um, but yeah, free market, I guess. So wonderful. Now I'm throwing it over to Turk. Yeah. So I I agree, Shu. I wish the conversation could have gone to more of the cancel culture stuff instead of vax misinformation stuff. But I I want to say that. You know, when it comes to cancel culture, big tech is a mechanism of being canceled. You get canceled from these big platforms, and and then it depends on uh, who catches wind of your post, right, or your hot take or whatever, right? If you say something that's spicy and it's taken out of context, you know, that's, that's why I think, you know, I'm with Pixel, where we need that nuanced conversation, and we don't need to just go half-cocked and just start reporting people because they're saying mean things they don't that you don't like so you know i i'm with count uh connor on this one we need to have a much thicker skin when it comes to discourse in general it doesn't have to be politics i hate consoles Col- console peasants need to go uh pc master race and all that stuff so it's like we all need to get thicker skin and we all need to be able to talk to each other and have decent discussions and vosh Yeah, um, I just I think the obfuscation of this topic and its boundaries really make it difficult to address. When it comes to the behavior of people online, I think that what I refer to as cancel culture largely comes from insulatory behavior. Communities wall themselves off from other communities, which makes it hard for them to understand the perspectives of other groups, which makes them act, well, terminally online. You know, what nowadays we call is the worst excess of cancel culture on Twitter used to happen pretty often back on 4chan which was the most terminally online site back in its day, or at least one of them, where back in the early aughts, like every few weeks, you would hear some big horror story about a person's life being ruined by Anonymous, you know, the the online legion that neither forgets nor forgives. Now, we didn't call it cancel culture back then, and back then they all played it up for fun, and in retrospect, a lot of what happened was kind of regrettable, but it all gets caused by the same types of behavior, right? Small insular communities, or big ones sometimes, um, lose perspective uh, because they're no longer in contact with the rest of the world, and they act out on it. I think one of the best things we could do to address this would be to get rid of targeted advertisements and to design social media websites in ways that actually go against the current trend. Depersonalize your homepage. Because nowadays, any social media website, you can curate the stuff that you see to the point that you're essentially on a different website than everyone else on there. I think that makes us more alone, and I think it's great for advertisers. I think it's great for user retention, but I think it's bad for our mental health. 
So that's something we could work on. Okay, I want to thank you all for a great topic. We're going to move on to the next one. But before we do that, I uh, do want to ask everybody in chat to please support the channel. It takes a lot of effort to put these things together. Yep. Drop a sub, drop a dono. If we get to 1,200 oh. subs on Twitch, I will be doing an IRL uh, Change My Mind at the University of Maryland in person. We'll live stream the whole thing. We'll put it on YouTube. It'll be a blast. You guys will be able to pick the topic. Other than that, my biggest project right now is trying to push the YouTube. All you need to do is go to Dylan Burns TV on YouTube, D-Y-L-A-N-B-U-R-N-S TV on YouTube and support it. Soon, I'm going to be finally releasing my review of Buck Breaking. You can also see my footage from the September 18th uh, free the uh, J6 rally, which I went to in person and many other people on this platform covered. I have edited all the, well, my editor edited, I exploited his labor. Fuck. And you can go over there and watch out, appreciate it. Again, that's D-Y-L-A-N, B-U-R-N-S TV on YouTube. It has I really to be appreciate it. And it so costs it you literally curly. nothing. So we're going to go into the next topic. And the next topic is refugees. So currently there is a scandal within the Biden administration on one hand, and on the other hand, there is an ongoing debate about what to do with refugees. Uh, we had the issue of Afghan refugees come up in American discourse, and most recently, it is Haitian refugees with the treatment of them on the border, and of course, uh, now the infamous pictures of the um, Border Patrol on horseback. So the question is, what should our refugee policy be, and what do you all think of the recent incidents? Should we have a more limited approach to bring in refugees, or should we be trying to take in as many as possible, et cetera? You get the idea. We've all seen the recent discourse. We're going to start in the top left-hand corner with Aircraft Sparky. What should we do with the refugee situation? Well, we already have standing laws in place. There's international laws in place of what actually constitutes what a refugee is. We need to follow those laws. And what uh -huh. it when what we're seeing a lot of is we see huh? people coming from other countries that are not uh -huh. of their own, which going by the law, they need to apply for asylum in those countries pr prior to trying to enter our country illegally. It's what? very simple. When it comes down to the Afghan situation, looking at the SIVs, I spent three tours over there in Afghanistan and met a lot of great Afghans. What? And those who helped America righteously deserve to, to be given asylum here in America. Those who still want to leave Afghanistan that we've already pulled out, we can send them to Qatar, Dubai, whatever. But if they didn't benefit America in any way, we don't owe them anything. Just because Afghanistan kind of is not a great place, not not really a reason. You've got to, in order for refugee status, you've got to be politically oppressed, You've got to you be religiously oppressed. You've got to be targeted specifically. There's, there's several different things that constitute what grants refugee status. We need to actually follow the laws. As far as the hyperbole going down at the southern border with the, the Haitian refugees, yeah, they're not really refugees. Uh, a good bit of them are actually have Chilean and Brazilian IDs. What happened with the pictures of the, on the, the police on horseback? Because of the terrain, they were using horseback. No, they were not whipping these people. That is complete fake news. And I, I guess, you know, maybe, just maybe, our politicians who are big on giving out misinformation, may, maybe they should be canceled. Hmm. Let's see what everyone else has to say. Joe Lewis? Oh, my God. I've seen some wild things on this channel and this, this community in this space. And I've never seen someone use Haitians in shock quotes. That is something fucking incredible. Um, yeah, the media handled the horseback situation pretty irresponsibly. NPR was the only one that didn't like fall into that trap of whips. And their initial reporting is that it looks like they're using reins. We now know that that to be true, albeit the images are still very jarring and very striking. And I think there's better ways to use horses to combat immigration like that or migration like that um you can make i'm sorry lefties you can make a border and make a perimeter to to deal with the traffic like horses are versatile in a lot of other ways and i don't necessarily think that the agents were able to exercise the the full ability of what they can do but that's one of the problems right is that these are individuals who are underfunded under resourced and to be quite frank under managed 
like my state right now, we have about, I think it's something along the lines of 11 refugee camps. And we don't have the ability to, to keep all these people in these locations. Like there's a set cap for that. Like they don't have the resources for the 110,000 that are estimated to be there. And these are like DHS has spread this across multiple locations dealing with this. And that's, that's not good. Like we need to give better funding and better training for practices, policies and procedures to, to ICE and other agencies. Like that doesn't like negate the fact that I think the DHS should be abolished and built from the ground back up. But if, if I'm living in reality right now, I have to yield that like we have to do a better job at the border. Um, I think the first step is funding, um, but I, I don't know. Maybe Biden will do it. Maybe he won't do it. Um, who's that? I don't fucking know. Uh, um, but yeah, that was pretty yikes um, aircraft, but maybe we can see what you really meant to say. That's all I got for now. Okay. Now we're going to throw it over to Shoe on Head. Okay, so when it comes to, like, the refugee crisis, I think we have to, like, prioritize, and although this sounds, like, really mean, but, like, the Afghan refugees, for example, like, we basically helped fuck their country, like, up, and I feel like we should definitely take as much as we can from there, um, and the whole, like, border crisis in general, like, I just feel like we don't even have enough resources or anything to, like, help these people, um, like, Biden, for example, had the idea to like house people in hotels. And that was like, okay, why don't we do that for like, you know, the homeless people here? First of all, if if that's like an option just to do this, why haven't we been doing that for like anyone? But anyway, um, I feel like we don't have enough resources or even like jobs or anything. And we have to like, of course, like I we need like borders or whatever. I think the horseback thing was like really like disturbing to look at um i didn't know they weren't whipping them i thought they were whipping them this whole time that was like holy shit but um yeah i think it needs like like you said joe it needs just like hold like it needs funding we need to just redo the entire system than what we're doing now but yeah i'm like pro fucking border wall and all of that but yeah i think that we need to prioritize like the afghan refugees first I think. Turk? Yeah, so again, I'm shocked that I actually agree with Joe on something here, uh, because as a Border Patrol agent, you are given certain tools in order to actually do your job. One of those tools is uh, the usage of a horse with split reins, and there is unfavorable terrain throughout the entire border region. doesn't matter if it's Texas uh, or Arizona or New Mexico. Horses are used to traverse the terrain and they also establish kind of a uh, boogeyman factor because it's a person on a horse it's kind of scary right but i think it's a complete overstep by the uh, biden administration to say we're going to remove horses from serving on the border because now what are they supposed to do are they going to drive motorcycles and run over refugees that are still illegally entering the country i i really think that's a huge boondoggle and it's a really bad situation But again, to go to what Shu said, it's like, I'm a compassionate human being. I would love to uh, help all of the people that are legally entering as refugees or asylum seekers. And I wish we could flood the border with more uh, judges, more attorneys to go and help process these cases. Because if there's a legitimate need there, I think we should be able to provide need. But for all the other people that are just crossing the dam over in the Del Rio uh, area, that's not uh, going and congruent with the law and they need to be pushed back to where they need to go and they need to do things legally. But I can, I completely admit that we do need the other side. We got to be able to process the people that are coming in and just, you know, where's the priorities? Is it the border? Is it this $3.5 billion or trillion dollar infrastructure bill? You know, where do you want to put money? And my bet's not on these refugees. Okay. Next is going to be, uh lecture fan okay well first of all i think the afghan situation is kind of separate but when you're talking about this when this when you're talking about the southern border the vast majority of those are not refugees those are illegal aliens that are coming here for economic opportunity so dylan your question is completely biased even referring to it as a refugee crisis on the border it's it's a it's they're illegal aliens that are coming here because they they want a better life which is perfectly understandable you know i understand that they want to come to the united states for a better life the united states is a wonderful open tolerant 
loving, wonderful, great society. Lots of people, literally hundreds of millions of people all around the world uh, want to come here. But, you know, we, we know what's going on. I mean, Donald Trump had basically secured the southern border uh, with a couple of different policies and a couple of different uh, ways. Oh. And as soon as Biden came into office, he reversed all those Trump policies. And now we've got a humanitarian crisis. Um, this is coming about because of the radical left is is pressuring the Biden administration to make these absurd po policies on the on the southern border. Uh, and that is all rooted in another belief that the United States is a horrible, racist country. We don't deserve the America's a illegitimate company. We stole all this land. We shouldn't even have borders, open borders, everything. Take down the United States. The United States is this horrible country. That's where a lot of that is coming from. So. Yeah, it, it's it's obvious what's going on. And, uh, you know, D uh, Joe Biden's poll numbers are looking very, very bad. And the 2022 elections are looking very, very bad for Democrats. So if you Democrats and Joe Biden, you want to continue to allow the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of illegal aliens pouring into this country every year, literally m m several million illegal aliens coming Christ. into the country every year on top of the million uh, legal immigrants that we take in every single year. Um, it's it's not going to go well for you Democrats. Thank you for calling out my uh, left wing bias lecture fan. I appreciate it. These I'm sure the viewers appreciate take it. So long. Holy uh, shit. I, I do want to be clear like though that the reason I created this is because people are being deported right now under Title 42, which means that they're not able to use their asylum status, or, or at least at least they're not able to file for asylum status within the United States. So. If they are trying to file for asylum status in the United States, that it is, at least in part, a refugee issue. We have topics about immigration as well. Uh, when we have that, I'll invite you back for that one as well so you can uh, give me an opinion on both worlds. Now I'm going to throw it over to counterpoints. Oh, right. So imperial power is accountable to the states that it interferes in. Once you start killing people in another country, you have a moral duty to help the people in those country if it ends up being a fuck up. There's this great quote from the movie Full Metal Jacket, which is about Vietnam War, which uh, says in a more fucked up way, inside every Vietnamese person is an American. Uh, I'm actually being a little meanie, but I'm, I still actually believe this shit. I think every American, uh, America is not uh, an ethnic identity, it's a, it's a civic identity. And I think the three pillars of that civic identity are freedom of conscience, basically the right to believe what you uh, want to believe, the right to self-defense, including your own government, which is enshrined in the Second That's Amendment, and then limited ideology. government, which is enshrined in the other ones, that Underneath basically means that people, the government has to follow its own rules when it establishes that. It I can't to. disobey its own constitution, it can't disobey its own laws. If you believe in those three principles as a founding part of a civil society that's successful, then I want you as an American. I don't care if you're born in Iran, Afghanistan, or Vietnam, you know, come on in. But that being said, we don't have unlimited resources. Uh, in order to avoid the moral responsibility that comes with imperial Sorry, I have a habit I of talking quietly when they're talking defense. because this is something where you couple I don't soft know. power I'm like muted, so it doesn't really matter. military advisors. That way, instead of blowing the fuck out of countries and massive invasions, you basically have to, you help domestic and indigenous security forces uh, achieve regional goals. It's something that I talk about a lot. I encourage everybody to Google the term foreign internal defense. I, I talk about it all the time. When it comes to Central America or the Caribbean, I would say that America has neglected its own backyard. I think we should become and enforce our role as a regional hegemon and take the development of South and Central America as a serious priority. Uh, as China asserts its power in Asia, chances are that we are going to become increasingly boxed out of uh, you know the, our spheres of influence globally. And what I would say is, as we back down from other international responsibilities, we should look at our backyard as far as uh, development, soft power, hard power, all that kind of stuff. And then I do have a meme proposal before I yield. My meme proposal is, let's invade down to the Panama Canal. You've now taken a fucking uh, border that's thousands of miles long. You've made it, you know, 30 miles long. And uh, you could just have an aggressive Coast Guard. We can reinstitute Gran Colombia, which was the dream of Simone Bolivar uh, from Colombia. We can add 10 whole states. We can add D.C., Puerto Rico, and eight Mexican states. Uh, we, we could probably add Guam. That way our flag isn't all fucked up. And then uh, also Argentina, uh, Chile, on? and Brazil can get their shit together. And then they can develop as well. So. So, uh, you know, I want I don't just want the United States of America. I want the big dicked con intercontinental United States of America. And uh, I'll leave it there. OK, next is going to be Pixel. 
Um, okay, I didn't know that we were going to go to uh, uh, American imperialism and uh, Joe Biden being representative of the radical left. Um, but I, I will just give you my general takes on um, immigration and asylum seekers and that can lead off into the conversation that we're going to have. I am very pro-regulated immigration. I think that Australia treats its uh, asylum seekers, refugees horrendously. There needs to be uh, more uh, structural supports for people um, seeking asylum into Australia. And I think it's the probably very similar in America. Um, I don't think we are getting away from globalization. Um, so I think the conversation around immigration and as accepting asylum seekers and migration is going to be a very important one over the next little while. Seeing climate change and mass migration in general, we are going to have to figure out a way to navigate that. Um, and I don't think we're getting away from globalization. So, yeah, I, 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 I think the conversation needs to be around what structural supports need to exist to allow for um, whatever sort of cultural assimilation is required. Um, and that I, I and I'm going to finish it here. And I, I don't know if America should keep invading other countries. It would, it would be where I finish my take. But yeah. Bosh. OK. First of all, the asylum seeking process requires that an asylee or an asylum seeker enter the country and declare their asylum seeking status at an appropriate official or institution. You have to go in the country to do it. You have to enter the United States. It is not illegal to come in here to declare your asylum status. It can be found afterwards that you don't apply for it, in which case you can be deported. But the two kinds of asylum seeking that there are, affirmative and defensive, uh, neither of them are illegal when they involve crossing the border to speak with a U.S. official on the subject. That's one. For two, we have a huge immigration crisis in this country. The problem is we're not spending enough money on it. Not on enforcement, but on getting the goddamn immigration courts at the southern border enough money to process the hundreds of thousands of backed up cases that we refuse to fund properly. You know how much we spend on this? It's in the single digit billions per year. That's nothing. You could tax one billionaire properly, and that'd be enough to single-handedly fix the backup in the immigration courts. We're talking, what, how much do we spend on this? A fraction of what we spend on Trump's wall. Instead, we could invest in properly going through all these asylum uh, applications. Not all of them are going to be found legitimate. I imagine many of them are. And then we can welcome them into this fine country, which we should be doing because we want a higher population. Because if you nationalist fear mongers actually want to fight China, you should want to do so with a bigger population. The whiteies in this country are like panda bears, okay? Population rates dropping. We need immigrants to supplement that. And I want to see this country dying because we were too afraid of letting folks in here. Folks who are ready and willing to work. Folks who we know do not disrupt their economy or the average wages of the people who live here beyond incredibly marginal amounts that can be more than compensated for with welfare programs that we could fund with a fraction of the wealth that new workers bring in. This is a solid gold W, my friends. A solid gold W. We could make this country stronger, wealthier, and all we have to do is not be afraid of immigrants and properly fund the systems that allow them to become citizens. I'm uh, totally in favor of this 100%. Okay. Uh, let me just be clear. If you raise your hand once, that should be enough. You don't need to raise your hand three or four or five or six or We're seven times. We're about to be dogpiled, okay? boys. Get ready. Wonderful. Very anxious. Okay. <laughs> I can see that. I saw Connor so, was anxious, so I had to be anxious. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. The thirst is real there, Connor. Okay, so um, again, I'm going to throw it to somebody who hasn't started us off before. So I saw Aircraft was supposed to raise his hand, so I'll just throw it to Aircraft. So asylees, you are right, Vosh. Asylees are supposed to apply within the U.S., and that is fair. But that is meant to be at a port of entry or at an embassy, which happens to be in almost every country in the world, and that also tends to be U.S. soil. It's not the problem that we're fear mongers and we just don't – we don't want to let people in. I just don't allow any any rando jackass to come into my house, and I severely That's doubt wrong. you do either. You can't so, apply for asylum at embassies. You can't. You can Google it. It comes up right. You can't do it. You have to enter the border. You can you can apply for visas. For visas, for at visas, a, at, yeah, but at that's a whole process, not for asylum. Thing. 
the bigger the bigger issue is that it is illegal to file a fraudulent asylum application, which is what we're seeing significant numbers of. How do you so, know? Yeah, we aren't you, processing you, their where, cases. In what context? How do you because know that? They're not asylees. They're here to get. They're here for economic uh, benefit. They're not how asylees. How do you know they're, that without their case caught. being processed? So, they're, they're, you got to source it. Okay, okay, okay. Well, okay. Stop, stop, stop. stop. Thank you for responding quickly. That was four people at once. Nobody heard what any of you had to say. So we're going to let Lecture Fan finish the statement, and then we're going to have people respond to that statement. Then we're going to go back to the list, which has counter and Turk on it. Yeah, no, it's uh, yeah. It, I was just saying it's it's well known that leftist NGOs in Central America and South America are teaching. Um, potential illegal aliens, what they have to say in order to uh, get through the initial stage of an asylum application. This is why this is why the Republicans have been trying to reform our asylum process you believe in for a process? long time because it's very easy to abuse it. Because you just say you just come in and you say, "Oh, I am I'm fleeing because of political persecution." Okay, here you've got a case, and then you're going to yeah. lose that eventually, and then they never show up to their hearings. But then they're here, and and ninety five percent of asylum of seekers of show up to their people meetings. That are up. There's actually millions of cases that are backed up. It takes five years to get some of these immigration cases through. And of course, the immigration ca ca uh, court system is a joke. It's run by the federal government. Everything they do is a joke. 95% of asylum seekers show up for their hearings. So you're lying about that. And also, how can you say their asylum? Uh, <laughs> no, how that, can you say their, uh, their application? Okay, I know that stat. How can you I know say that, stat that you're using. their applications are wrong when they haven't gone through due process yet? This is, the, this is how our courts work. You file the application. If it turns out that they were incorrect, then they get deported. That's how it works. It just turns out that a lot of them have legitimate asylum cases because a lot of countries okay, that well, aren't the USA suck. But... Because we're the USA, because I want to make America great again, I say we spread our light to the world by allowing people who want to live here the opportunity to come and contribute their productiveness to our economy. And I will agree with you there. I actually want people to come in here legally. I don't care they where are. you come from, what walk of life, but if you cross our border illegally and not through a port They're of entry— not. You are illegally coming through. That's into not the country. illegal. You you, it's not. Focus, focus, focus. It is illegal. It's, it's not. not a, it's not a strong. You're not, you're not saying shit right now. They're coming in through a port of entry. If we're talking about Haitian immigrants here, they're coming through a legal port of entry. If you do not come through, come through an actual border checkpoint, you are not coming through you know a port fucker, of entry. Argues, it's so fucking stupid, man. Hey, shut the fuck up. Border if I want to rip off you, I'll pull it off my fucking zipper. Border okay? checkpoints are not actually... What did you just say to me? Right. Hold on, what the fuck did you just say to me? Oh my god, you're you both being antagonistic and we're not being productive at all. Can I say something that's actually real for a second? Wait, wait, pause, pause, pause. I actually didn't hear. What What did you say, Aircraft? Yeah. Say it again. What I said, if I wanted any lip from you, I'd take it off my zipper. What? It's a blowjob, dude. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it, got it, okay. Okay, thank you. Fuck. All right. So actually addressing the topic at hand, the the pro okay, so so here here's like the miscategorization that I think we need to address. Wall funding or physical security is a one-time investment that depreciates over time. Maybe you have to do maintenance costs, but when you're talking about investing into like a long-term program of pro uh, produce or uh, of uh, processing asylees or whatever, yeah, it could be super cheap and maybe it'll be a small small part of the budget, but at the same time that's going to be an annual cost. So these things are not necessarily comparable from that perspective. Additionally, we're not doing anything to address the push-pull uh, factors that uh, involve immigration. So right now we're arguing over whether or not it's fear for their life or their LGBTQ or they're coming from a failed state that America fucked up or they're coming from a failed state that we had nothing to do with or maybe we we invested in like a, a banana company that murdered labor union people like 50 years ago or some shit. I don't fucking know. That's the truth is that- section. Yeah, it's a fan fiction. Are you fucking was, kidding me? These are leftist talking points. All right, I love you. Anyways, so um, your hair is looking beautiful, by the way. So the, so the point being that if you're not dealing with these push-pull factors, then basically what you're doing is you're allowing all of Central and South America and the Caribbean to be a fucking mess, and we're going to be you know, having a few hundred thousand to a few million people coming into the country every single year. And then on top of that, like we're, we're talking about moral responsibility. I understand that you're making an economic argument because like you want to appeal to right-wingers, and that's awesome, cool. Thank you. But at the same time, like I don't have necessarily like a purely economic interest. Like I'm a civic nationalist, and the fact that I brought up the three things that I care about, I brought, I brought, I, dude. Th this is the thing. Like the things that I care about, 
the belief in freedom of conscience, the belief in freedom of uh, uh, the right to self-defense and the belief in a limited government, this is like a fucking bar to hurdle that's three inches off the ground. If you can't hurdle that fucking bar, I don't want you in my country because I think these are like what's necessary in order to produce a functioning and happy society. If you don't believe that shit, if you believe in authoritarianism, if you believe in collectivism, if you don't believe that somebody can defend themselves against other people or the state, or if you don't believe that the government has to follow its own rules, you're an authoritarian piece of shit. And I don't give a fuck what your personal circumstances. Are, are Haitians I don't want you in your... more authoritarian than United States? Wait, before, before no. you, wait, 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 how do we test finish, I also want to say, wait, mm -hmm. I want to say before anything else that what happened about five minutes ago was like a big thing. And Aircraft, I want to thank you for sharing your coming out story on my channel. I think it was a beautiful moment. And it takes a person. I know how much effort and, and how hard it is. So I just want to thank you for that, Sparky. It means a lot Listen, to me. Whoa, jo hard. Jo <laughs> continue. Jo Joe's a beautiful man. So no, but to, to address your point, Vosh, no, they're they're probably not. But I would still want to deal with like you're asking, like, how do we figure this out? You ask. Uh, and then you're and then here's the thing is like the thing that I think you're missing is how do we deal with the push pull factors of Haitian immigration? Haiti Haiti has issues. It has infrastructure issues, it has educational issues, it has social issues, it has economic issues. How do we help develop our region to make sure that everyone's solution in the planet? isn't to move to uh, you know a Western society. And then finally, these population issues that you're talking about, like, yeah, immigration can be a stopgap for demographic decline, but this is happening globally. Like literally every single country, including the, the countries that had like 10 or 15 as their like child birth rate, they've halved in the past 15 years. Almost every country on the planet is trending towards a population replacement rate between 1.5 and 3. Now, maybe automation is going to save our ass, but we can't look at immigration as the only economic thing that's going to save us. And um, and, and I'll, I'll yield right now, but the, the civic... The, the civic standards that I'm applying, again, are like the bare minimum for a free society. So, yeah. yeah oh, wait, well, Connor, I'd, li I'd like to respond to that, if I may, because sure. I think a lot of that was directed. Um, I don't I don't know, Joe. With regards to the, the arbitrary of these points. So economically, we know it's better to have immigrants. So that's a flat point. I mean, everyone agrees on that. Um, th with regards to the national interest, I just don't understand how it compromises any of the political values in this country. The most authoritarian collectivists here in America are white evangelical Christians. Nobody else even comes close. There's no racial, ethnic, religious, or political demographic that comes even remotely close to the effect that group of people have had on shutting down free speech uh, and trying to like uh, legislate morality. Nothing else even comes close. And I mean, the the people who come up from Central and Southern America are for the most part like Catholics too. And like even the political blocks they form don't even come close. Um, so with regards to that, I don't know why we'd be selecting for like outside the country. It just seems like no matter how you dice this up and do the math, allowing more people into the country does us good. No, it won't fix the uh, population problem forever. Everyone's going to have to deal with that. But as long as we do have an imbalance between our domestic birth rate and the birth rate of countries next to us, why not take advantage of their interest in coming here? If we find there is a time where too many people are trying to come here, we can deal with that. But right now, we're not at that point. People keep saying, like, we let in one million immigrants a year. So what is that? One million? That's piss baby shit. Our country is huge and very sparsely populated for its size too with all the wealth we have we could take three four five million a year in maybe we have nowhere near the level of long-term commitment to civilizational growth that china seems to have and i don't like china but we're gonna get outpaced in the civil civilizational game by them unless we're willing to think ahead a little bit Wait. while they're building ghost cities out in the misty mountains we're pissing ourselves mm -hmm. because we can't afford more immigrants coming in when we're only putting a couple billion towards immigration courts like what is this Okay, so holy shit, you said a lot. So basically, the, this is my problem: is I just want you, to, I want you to establish some principle because, like, I don't hear some basic fundamental principles that that I, I need in order for people to come into the country. So what I mean by that is, like, yeah, Central South America, we probably have a lot of a lot of aligned values. We're both like colonial societies. We both live in the Americas. We have tension between different ethnic groups of historical background, all that kind of shit. I do not view like Central or South America as some kind of threat to the United States of America. Um, same thing with the Caribbean. Uh, what I do have concerns with, uh, because we're, you know, let's face it, we've all been on the internet since at least 2016, um, is there are, you know, some people uh, within the Middle East and North and North African cohort that 
that do have authoritarian tendencies, that do think that theocracy is based, that do have uh, regressive attitudes when it comes to like social norms, when it comes to women and all that kind of stuff. And I think at the same time, like I'm not even saying exclude these people because basically within like two to three generations, these people tend to assimilate to the host culture. So I'm not even saying exclude these people. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set a bare minimum filtering criteria. And that bare minimum filtering criteria is basically believing in a liberal society. And the the weird thing about like when I forward this idea or whatever, when I don't hear somebody like instantaneously concede like, oh, yeah, I want to live in a free society, too. We should have minimum standards for people coming into the fucking country. It's like. Dude, like I want an even higher bar for immigration, but I'm trying to give you a fucking like uh, like a olive branch for how bare minimum we should consider people who are coming to the country. Can we and deport I don't the even authoritarians already here. Well, I mean, if they want to go, if they want to go to Italy and form some neo tradcath fucking cat girl state, then yeah, sure, Italy can have them. I what if we replace fuck. 20 million white evangelicals with 20 million like Catholics from Central America? I mean, it depends on what they want to do, man. Like, 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 so, I have like, to try but, pretty hard to outpace the... But can I... Sorry, sorry, yeah, I'll hold on, wait. I, the Turks won't we gotta, we, I do want to move on to other people who... Right, uh, uh, Turk and Joe uh, are on the list. If, if, I'll shut up in a second, but basically what I'm saying is, like, under your current, like, non-metric or non-standard of L admitting people into the country, technically, um, you know, and I want to address China at a later time, but basically, like... China could literally take like 300 million people and just send them here and then just have them like vote in communism like next day because you don't have a basic criteria of who can come to the country, what are the evaluative principles that like disclude and include people, and why do we why do we allow people in our society in the first place? Oh my damn it. I gave him an idea. Fuck. <laughs> no, no, no. You have to start singing the Texas uh, state song now because that's exactly what's happening with California Apply transplants into Texas. Applying for asylum don't make you a, a citizen. This is like 300 million or however many. You've got to go through the process. You'd have to fund all the people moving here. There'd have to be housing built. Then they'd have to apply for citizenship. And it'd take decades and decades. And hey, if China plans that far ahead, give them the W. Honestly, whatever. No, they try okay, harder than we that. did. And Dylan, I will shut up, but literally all I'm trying to get is a concession from people who are talking about immigration and they tend to be on the left and hyper sympathetic to other people from other societies is that the people come to the country believe in a free society. That's all I'm trying to fucking get out of y'all. And it's like pulling. Goddamn no, I, they, I just if you want to test for that, like have a test, an authoritarian test, then go for it. Make sure that people coming in are more likely to vote Democrat. I'm fine with that. I just I don't know how effectively you could. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sure. Turk, uh, okay. Joe, then Pixel. Yeah. So, so Vosh, I'm not a legal law or a, uh, immigration legal scholar, right? But your stance was as long as the asylum seeker comes into the country and goes to an, a proper authority to seek asylum, that's a legitimate process. Yeah. Well, there Is are that... two, there are two types of asylum seeking. It's when you, seek out uh, the port themselves, or if you use it defensively uh, to prevent yourself from getting deported if you're uh, caught either at the okay, border so, or further So away. step two, so you're, you're, I'm talking about step two there. So uh, I, I posted the link in our private chat in uh, the 10 hippy dippy whatever, uh, but apparently the mm -hmm. entire camp's gone now, right? And they've actually cleared it out. This is 5.15 today. 2,000 nationals have been taken back to Haiti and about 8,000 returned to Mexico voluntarily. More than 5,000 people will go to removal proceedings or be expelled through Title 42 of the public law. So, I, I, you know, those 5,000, they could be asylum seekers, but two-thirds of those people are not asylum seekers. You have no evidence to make to prove that. That you is the that, evidence. Right? 2,000 will be the, removed to Haiti, 8,000 left. You well, know that not to be the evidence. Well, Th that's the fact. Well, wait, well, no, 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 no. We know you they have. Just, you can't just lay out facts and then be like, "Well, if this is true. That means something." Come on, Turk, you're better well, than this, dude. No, wait, wait, you're wait, fucking wait, wait. better if, than this. If, if well, these well, people were asylum seekers, they would be part of that five thousand, right? They're trying to go through the legal process. Well, They're going to go to the court but, cases and whatnot. So, as I understand it, the problem is that America often just ignores international law when it comes to asylum. Like a ton yes. of the law that we have, like that's one of the reasons why a lot of asylum seekers don't go to a port of entry. They go into the country and try to establish themselves in here first. It's because they know that U.S. officials just flat ignore international law. You're supposed to be able to, once you declare yourself, get that shot at a hearing. But the people who are returning to Mexico, like, voluntarily, 
I gotta wonder about how voluntarily that is. I doubt they were just like, oh, okay, and like walk back. They probably wanted to put forward an asylum claim. Hey, look, that's that's a fair statement. I'm just saying that there's reports of 15,000 people living in this bridge, under this bridge, that yes. is in the United States, so they're not legally here. They haven't gone through a port of entry. There's some number of them that could be going through legal asylum processes, and there's a larger group, a uh, majority might be a safe term, that are not going through the asylum process. Is that an accurate? So let's statement? let's 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 lay this out a little bit more no, clearly let's, here, let's right? Second, second. Let's say we grant the the ability for all of them to submit an application. Oh, what, what was it? 15, 15,000, 15, Excuse me, fifteen thousand. Do you think with that surge we're going to see an increase of the acceptance rate for Haitians? Uh, I I can't make that guess. I'm I'm just saying. I have a lot of evidence to say no, but. <laughs> and I don't have that evidence. Feel free. Yeah, to the grant, the, the, the current, the current rate, the acceptance rate of asylum seekers are that sure, are this is, in this current situation. Yeah, well, the grant rate, which is the rate of individuals who are accepted, is bottom. Haiti is at the bottom. Even like, and I'm saying that bottom, bottom. Point at the like point we four point six two. We could, more. we could accept all of them, and even if we accept all of them with a grant rate of one hundred percent we still wouldn't be accepting we'd be sure we i'd relinquish we'd be probably in the top five of acceptance but even then i it's it's piss in the ocean so why we is can, it this number fifteen thousand that are all coming in here for asylum why aren't why is there's that so number there's the number so numbers? many there's so many factors to that and you know that and i'm not going to participate in this level of nuance exposing i know more about you on this topic we can Just, talk about this off stream so you're basically you're basically just admitting like the Biden administration is being totally inconsistent here. Nobody the knows Biden, what you nobody want, knows yeah, what they're yes. doing. I, I love nobody you. You can ready? justify you're what ready? they're doing. Wait, nobody can I'm gonna give you a spicy wait, wait, take. Wait, 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 stop. Wait, I, I didn't think... hear what I didn't hear anything of what lecture said. So right. don't respond. And yeah, Joe, let me. Yeah, of course. I'll just no, I, I was just saying like the reality here is that the Biden administration is totally inconsistent all the time. First, they're deporting people. Then they're not. Then they're letting people make asylum claims. Then they're not. And it's total. It's it's this total. In, and then they're they're out there telling people, hey, don't come here. Don't come here. And then when they come here, they're saying, OK, here, we're going to. Some of these people are being processed and given a, one of these notice to appears in 60 days. Other ones are, are getting actual uh, asylum cases started and getting thrown into the million plus backlog in a five year process. And and so the, the statistic that Vosh was talking about, 95 percent of people show to asylum. That's at the final asylum hearing. If you make it to the final asylum hearing, you've got a, a de you think you've probably got a decent chance of actually getting it. The issue is, is that. 80 90 percent plus don't ever show up when they're given one of these 60 day notice notice to appear so our our immigration system 80%. is incredibly complex very very few people ever actually understand our immigration system it's very very complex and confusing and totally screwed up and totally inconsistent and this is a disaster the biden administration has a disaster on the border on their hands and uh it's it's causing you, all kinds of problems. Yeah, and, but the pushback lecture fan, we can't act like it's just the Biden administration. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, wait, I'm gonna I, like, wait, I need I, the evidence for that. Where 80%, all the stats that I'm seeing, 99% show up, 92% show up. And wouldn't the final, like, uh, Fact checking claims no, that, about that's asylum for grants. Final, that's for final asylum hearings, not the, not the initial oh, notice yeah, to appear. Where's the 80? You, I would need the stats on that. Mark your fan, can you put something in post like after? Because that sure. number's new to me too. Um, how, so how, have you guys just, not heard of, how have you guys not heard these stats all over the place about how immigrants so we don't never read show up for their immigration hearings? Okay, stop, stop. Okay, I'll allow people to go look that up for themselves while pixel speaks because she is next i i, I just think that in this conversation i i can't speak to the specifics of the american legal system right but i think the conversation that everyone's having now about like how many do we take how do we whatever is kind of missing the entire point here america has a bigger conversation about immigration and the um i guess the way immigrants are presented to like legitimately half of america it's it's when you're talking about immigration, you have to talk about assimilation and what that means, which is um, 
you know, kind of what um, was being said before by counterpoints. And that is the bigger part of the conversation here. That is why terms like illegal aliens, that is othering, that is dehumanizing to um, people seeking asylum, people fleeing, um, you know, uh, opp oppression in other countries. And so you really, th the conversations need to exist around how you set up the structures for a cohesive society including immigration, because you can take as many um, immigrants as, as you want, right? Like you have a lot of space and stuff in America um, and you can take as many immigrants, but you need to be able to assimilate them to at least some sort of um, existence within the cultural hegemony, right? But like, I think where it gets lost is that half the country perceive all immigrants as like illegal aliens. And I think that part of the conversation is being missed. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to throw it over to uh, Aircraft Sparkly. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Pixel, you actually have a good a good point on the, on the assimilation thing. Uh, yeah, it's something that does need to be looked at when we're looking at immigration standards. Uh, many countries actually have laws that require a certain amount of assimilation in order to become a a uh, citizen of that country can you but, elaborate on that please uh, you yes that? if you if you live in like the in the country of saudi arabia you must speak arab arabic in order <laughs> to become a citizen there. oh shit these papers right. slap um i i know you may find that funny but doubt you've ever hey, hey man, i'm learning i'm learning a lot about you you like black men you came you're coming out as to a black man that's i'm very i'm, I'm surprised at how progressive you're becoming it's in a very yeah, short man. it's because montero I, I, just so dropped I'm everyone's Uber feeling the fever yeah, yeah definitely. uh but everyone's ignoring things like the first country standards okay this is international international norm when you go to the, the first country you leave after leaving the country that you are oppressed you are supposed to apply there you cannot yep. go asylum shopping and Yep. With these with these Haitians, that's what they're doing. They, they got forced out through Chile. What are you talking about? Uh no, some of them already were living in Chile, already had residents in Chile. Others had residents that's in Brazil. Not and then they walk, true. then they go through Mexico. You know which, that's not entirely yeah. true. Asylum asylum is not so you can be pick the best country in the world and then go there. No, asylum is supposed to be you're fleeing your country we from one here and other anyway. side. Oh, oh, and you up. go Come you on, go Dr. to the Fang. next country Come over. On, you go to the next country over. Asylum's not to hey, let's pick the best country in the world and go there and claim asylum. No. Asylum is you go to the next country over to flee a war torn country. That's wait, what can it's I, for. Wait, I just want to jump right in for a second. He's right about that. I just want to jump in for a second. First Okay, well well to be clear um uh it's gonna go vosh joe then counter okay go i um i don't even understand why we're arguing over like which country they get to settle in we should be like yoinking asylum um seekers from other countries you know like we want people in our country the more people we have in our country the more productive capacity we have um but also i looked up this info and the whole so and so many people don't show up for asylum meetings is not true hold on <clears throat> so the statistic that is often cited is that 50% of people even show up for their court cases in an asylum-seeking cases. That came from Republican Senator Rob Portman of Ohio. However, he was actually referring to the in absentia rate. That's not exactly the same as the number of people who don't show up to their meetings. If you don't show up to an asylum-seeking immigration court hearing, of course, your case is immediately dismissed and you are subject to removal at the next available time. A warrant is put out. So the in absentia rate does not reflect the proportion of people who show up to people who are kicked out, but rather the total number of people who are kicked out every year relative to pending cases, meaning that the statistics are going to be skewed in favor of the more hasty removal of um, in absentia cases, as opposed to the much more sluggish uh, ongoing asylum seeking cases. There are statistics provided from the U.S. Department of Justice which breaks down in absentia rates for all the different types of immigration court hearings, of which one particular type of immigration court hearing has the lowest in absentia rate, asylum seeking. By an mm -hmm. almost exponential degree, asylum seekers have a much lower in absentia rate than any other type of immigration uh, court uh, participants, an incredibly low rate relative to the others. UAC, all cases, they're far, far, far greater than what you see for asylum rates. So altogether, I think the info here suggests what I've been saying. People who come here looking for asylum do so in good faith because they want to live in this country free, proud, 
and without fear of police harassment. And that we should give Can them you? that opportunity because it's sick as hell when they're with us. So what Can actually constitutes well, what constitutes my actual reasons for asylum there, Volch? Because I think economic it's is my turn. There. It's my turn to talk, please. As the bottom of this relationship, Sparky, I want to be heard. <laughs> I'm glad you accept you the fact that you would definitely you, be the Stop. bottom. This is really petty stuff, dude. I'm getting. I'm going to go back. I want to play basketball, so I'm going to play basketball. So I have a question for Aircraft Sparky. Okay, and this idea of uh, and maybe let your fan too. This idea of like country shopping. Where do Haitian immigrants go? Where should they go? Wherever they land services. first. Wherever they land first, that's not an answer. Where should that they go? That is an answer. That is actually the answer. That's not that the answer. That is the international They landed, they landed in they Chile. Go. They landed in Chile, and they got choked out by the government. Where should they go from there? Bolivia? Peru? Sure. Venezuela? Brazil? All these anti-black countries? Bar. And like, and then... Brazil's anti-black Yes. Bar. Really? Spoiler alert. <laughs> these countries are incredibly anti-black. You look no further than Brazil, my friend. Look no further than oh, Chile. Man. Look no further than the DR. These countries are anti-black. The so, Dominican Republic is anti-black. At, le at, yes! at least we're now admitting that America is not anti-black. That's good. No, good. America is anti-black too, but that's so a story. That's a, that's a, a, a part of the conversation. <laughs> they go to but, so again, this doesn't answer my question, Sparky. Where do they go? I'm going to give you, I know you have no idea where Haiti is. I'm just going to throw out some countries, right? What about El Salvador? Oh, dude, look. Honduras? Um, I'm glad I'm not going to ask these questions states, right these now. all are push-pull yeah. factors. Yeah, do you see the problem oh, here? Like, it seems like due to a bunch of other factors, which may or may not have been caused by the United States, it seems like Haitians have nowhere else to go but the United States. First so, off, why are people from Haiti going that far south to Chile? I mean, honestly, logistically, that makes earthquakes. no sense. No, but they're, they're but they're why go there? Just go straight to the U.S. Why do you have to go to Chile first? That doesn't make logical sense. Do you really think these Haitians yeah. would make it to Florida? <laughs> but they made it to Chile. I mean, that, logistically, that that's equal. It's actually, further away. Okay, be, because because Latin America has its own fucking caste system, and this is why I get frustrated with fucking Hispanics who act like fucking white people are the only people who invented fucking racism. They literally used to have a fucking racial caste system in South and fucking Central America. Your, your Anglo Europeans are not the only people who have ever been fucking racist against black people. It's a sliding fucking scale. Which is uh, my point. So, yeah, and and yeah. on top of that, we have to acknowledge that the economic opportunities available in Chile and Argentina probably pale in comparison uh, to the opportunities that are in the United States of America. And not only that, Chileans and Argentinians, because they don't have a bunch of woke fucking progressive douchebags on their twitch.tv fucking shows, probably feel a lot less bad about being racist as fuck. So it's probably, you know, it's probably cooler to be racist and an asshole in Chile and Argentina. So, so to go, going to that point, Joe, how do they logistically go from Haiti to Chile and avoid all of those other countries and conflicts? It's li listen, I'm Seriously. trying to not be semantical and nuanced on, on these things anymore because that's a much more complicated answer than we have time for. It's not a pivot. It, no, there's a logistical uh, it's, it's, answer to it. And no, it's a much more. no, no, no. It's such a long, it's such a long conversation because this country has been fucked for decades. So in order to have a conversation so about they why they, why they, to the order, the order to have a conversation, the order, do they go to uh, Ecuador, Peru? I mean, Logistically, in order to have to the U.S. In order to have, I agree with you there. But the but the, there's another problem which might have to do with why they are there in the first place. But that's what I'm trying to allude to. Is that one of the problems when we talk about the situations of these Caribbean countries, especially, is that nobody gives a fuck about them. And then when we end up in conversations about the plight of Haitians, and then like we're all surprised, like, well, why are you at the American border? And it's like maybe because all these other countries, if they're not anti-black, then they're anti-Haitian. So maybe it might seem better at first, but then they still get choked out by these governments and then they end up at our borders. I'm still arguing that we should accept more Haitians. Period. There I don't see the the I don't see the the type of problems that might exist as what as asylums or just regular immigrants. They should they should be able to all apply and this and this thing should be expedited. We're fucking doing it for Afghans. We can do it for Haitians. But okay, but th this is my fucking well, now, problem. Before, one second. First, I want to acknowledge that Aircraft Sparky is the most progressive person in here. He is a now openly queer man who speaks Arab. 
uh, I want to throw it over to um, uh, Shu because Shu has said literally nothing the whole time. I'm going to make her talk. Literally, if she just passed or anything, oh. just give her a chance. No? Um, or... Just bring up one thing. Oh, okay. wait, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. okay. <laughs> I thought I was on mute. Um, okay, so just to bring up one thing that like is sort of, I think is an issue is like, when people immigrate here, they usually like wind up living in little pockets. And I know that my freaking ancestors came here and they moved to like Brooklyn and Little Italy and whatever. Um, and I feel like we should do something about that where we should like spread people, you know, out. And so they don't all just kind of, you know, get into one little group and like they don't assimilate or whatever. Um, how do you guys feel about that? Do you think that's I think I, th I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. I, that's a big part of assimilation. And I think one of the reasons we're not seeing that as much as we used to is because today we have the highest percentage of foreign born people living in the United States than at any other time in history, other than I think like the 1890s. But there, as a percentage of the population, there is a higher percentage today than at almost any other time in history. And so I think once you get to that level where there's so many uh, foreign born immigrants here, you're going to naturally start to see them uh, do enclaves like that and, and less assimilation. And there's and I think ultimately that kind of leads to a destabilizing society because then there's not as much of a shared culture. And I, I think a melting pot is ideal mm. and not like these little enclaves of enclaves of this, 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 this and the other thing. Yeah, back I think door anti redlining. Was that a back door anti redlining? Yeah, well, oh I think God. it's it's a 50-50 thing because on one <laughs> hand, I think that ethnic minorities have a right to establish cultural enclaves in our country. After all, this isn't really a melting pot, it's a salad, right? I mean, so much cool stuff in America is because we have the input of different cultural influences. I think that's good. I don't want everyone to be, you know, all uh, I love Lucy white picket fence or we'd have nothing coming from this country except for I don't know gelatin encased food um, that being said sometimes the whole enclave thing ends up being a real bad meme because if you have a bunch of immigrants from a country forming an enclave they like they don't learn the language and they don't really like uh, participate in a lot of broader economic stuff and what that can lead to is well essentially ghettoization you have initially like you have like just the enclave but then social resources aren't diverted towards those areas because uh, of a bunch of broader socioeconomic reasons and it can essentially lead to a lot of economic segregation i think there's a balance we have to strike between being permissive of foreign cultures and peoples not demanding they assimilate while also gently encouraging everyone to be able to you know c participate in the broader project you know the multi-level structure can i can i interject because i think it's my turn and on top of that i have something to say to this directly sure and then we're going to move on to the last topic of the night okay so so basically it, it would almost be cool if somebody had proposed a few basic liberal civic virtues that everybody could ascribe to in order to have a free and happy society regardless of whether or not they liked f different kinds of food or had a different language or you know whatever and and that's kind of where my frustration I, i'm happy that you gave that concession that we could we could have this like bare minimum expectation of like you know civic expectation um but but i don't always get that oftentimes what i get is uh extreme pushback where it's like oh you're imposing your morality yeah well i'm imposing some level of fucking morality and that morality is that everybody should have freedom of conscience everybody should have the right to self-defense the government should follow what it says that it's going to do and if we don't set up these basic foundational rules then we're going to devolve into some kind of either shithole or an authoritarian shithole so that that's why i'm so adamant about it um so now i'm going to launch into my turn um, so I think China is a, a paper tiger. Right now, they're going through a housing crisis that might actually destabilize their entire market. Um, it's something that's been written on the wall for a really long time. I would invite people to Google it. It's basically their Lehman moment, as they call it, for the Lehman Brothers. Um, then also, they're they're facing demographic issues worse than us, and they have ethnic hostilities worse than us. Their birth rate is 1.3. Uh, I think demographic replacement is 2.15. American Europeans currently sit at 1.85. And they fucking hate Tibetans and Uyghurs way more than we fucking hate each other. So I, I think China is a paper tiger that can get punched through. Also, one of the things that you brought up was like uh, we we could take in three to five million people per uh, per year. I think we already do. I think legal immigration is 1.5 million, and I think illegal immigration is estimated to be an additional 1.5 million. So, and then I want to address some other things that you said, Bosch. So uh, more me? people in order to invest in uh, or in order to have like more productive capacity. This is something that um, lecture 
fan brought up that I just want to beat the ever living fuck out of conservatives over. If we want to have an assimilated and integrated society, guess where you need to invest? Education. It's your one fucking opportunity to give people communal values, communal language, and the opportunity to thrive. And instead, we got a bunch of libertarian and ANCAP dickheads trying to fucking slash the social safety net that it allows our fucking society to function. So compulsory. I'm appealing. So, yeah, it needs to be compulsory. Sorry, Demon Mama. Um, it needs go. to be. Yeah, so it needs to be compulsory. But on top of that, if you want to have strong social institutions, you have to reinforce those strong social institutions. And we shouldn't be conceding this to a bunch of like progressive and leftist fucking dickheads. We should be looking for strong social institutions in order to forward an American agenda. So uh, that's frustrating as fuck to me. Wait, so are, you, are you for school choice then? Uh, okay, school. Okay, I would not care about school choice if it was a broader picture of schools of, in general being of good quality, and if school choice was a factor in increasing that quality. I don't want school choice to mean that in the ghettos there are shit schools, and in the cool areas there are good schools, and then people can just fucking move around, and then we just let all the dumb fucks in the fucking shitty areas like lapse into fucking poverty and misery and criminality and, and fucking violence and shittiness. Like, fuck that. Like, everybody has, everybody should have an opportunity to do a good education regardless of whether or not they're a good person regardless of whether or not they come from a good family and the and the fact that like conservatives and republicans have left the fucking field when it comes to reinforcing education is a major civic lapse because guess what your best opportunity to educate young americans about what being an american is fucking school so all right sorry if i'm a little frustrated but god damn it that pisses me the fuck off um so anyways to all the conservatives who are actually listening to this Take the opportunity, understand that conservatism is not about slashing social fucking safety nets and promoting Christianity. It's about creating strong social institutions that promote a healthy society. And uh, I'll leave it there, and that can be my outro as well, Dylan. Okay, now we're doing outros. I'm going to start with Aircraft Sparky. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, that was... That was a ridiculous rant there, Connor. Um, look, conservatives aren't against strong education, uh, school choice, things like that okay. is, is right. how we right. get around the, the problems with, pub, with the public education. But this isn't about all that. If you want to talk about that, reach me offline. You know where to find me. Um, when we talk about the refugee deal, especially with the Haitians, hate to break it to you, first country, they don't show up in Florida. They don't show up on the coast somewhere. <laughs> They have went to another country. They must apply for asylum there, and then they have to keep on moving. That's really what it is. So when it comes down to the Haitian refugee issue, it's very simple. Remain in Mexico policy, which has been upheld by the Supreme Court. Go ahead and uh, follow that, and uh, Mexico will end up absorbing a lot of those, a lot of those individuals. Uh, although I am laughably, I'm laughing at the Biden administration's suggestion of, oh, we're gonna deport some of these people over to Gitmo to hold them. Uh, no, that's not, a, that's not a good idea at all. Uh, with the Afghans, we, we did horrible things to, to that country. The ones who helped us, we should immediately give them refugee status and bring them over. Uh, we did a lot of that, but we left a lot of those people there. And that is actually a problem. We brought a bunch of people who were unvetted. In fact, in Wisconsin, they just arrested two of those people who were unvetted, one for child sex and the other one for uh, domestic abuse. Uh, there's been a couple of instances up in the Northwest where they've been having problems with some of these Afghan refugees who are not vetted. They they weren't they were brought over here unvetted. I understand, and you know what? I'll even be gladly I will gladly accept them if they assimilate, and they don't have to give up their entire culture. They don't have to give their up their religion. They just have to learn basic things like hey, we kind of value liberty here. Um, well, most of us does. do. Some don't. And uh, look. We conduct business in English, little things like that, just to make their lives a little bit easier. If they're willing to assimilate, I'm willing to take them in. And then we probably need to reform our immigration deal. I would suggest something over more towards a New Zealand style of immigration policy where, hey, we're not going to just accept anybody. You need to actually bring something we need. So we need skilled labor. We need people with certain types of education requirements. And yes, we do need general laborers as well, but we don't need a crap ton of people 
who don't actually possess skills that can benefit America. I have no problem with immigration. Legal immigration is perfect. It is wonderful. It is great. You don't allow complete asshole strangers into your home. I feel like you I'm actually, actually the bring least people into your home person who you panel. know. That's why we vet people. That's Except why we have sure. the application guess, process for nah, immigration. Shoot, Joe. If that's followed, all are welcome. Nah, shoot Joe and Thank you. I'm the fourth. Joe. Yeah, it's funny seeing right wingers talk about education when they're they're then when they say like what's the first country they go to? It's it's Florida. Um, so I, I didn't know Florida was a country, but then again, maybe maybe it is right. Run by um, Vice President Ricky Rose and uh, President Armando Perez is everybody we might know quickly as Pitbull. Um, so I'm very glad that I guess Florida ended up into a country in the past 24 hours. It's fucking news to me, dog. Um, as far as Haitian immigrants are concerned, there is like a long term policy that I'm kind of in support of, which is choking the shit out of France, forcing through tariffs and by whatever means necessary to pay reparations to Haiti, period. And we can do a lot of things to, to do that, but I think we have to choke the shit out of their economy until they fucking pony up. Um, because this is a country that had to essentially pay for their independence from France. So I think it ought to be best that they at least, you know, get a little bit of that fucking reparations. Um, Cause it's fucking ridiculous how hard that country has been fucked. And now we're seeing consequences of that where we're seeing Haitian immigrants um, at the United States border. They have every right to be there and go through that process, but it's very clear that this country needs a more concentrated effort in what's currently happening. And I think France should be held accountable and responsible. Um, as far as everything else, we can probably get to it and post it another time. Lecture fan. Um, I just, the real the reality is is that ninety percent of the people coming here illegally or coming here at all to make any kind of claim are coming here for economic opportunity. Economic opportunity is not a valid claim for refugee status or asylum or anything like that that's just the reality so if, if you want to talk about asylum and refugees that's that's afghanistan maybe that maybe was haiti in 2010 after the earthquake it's not haiti today this is all has to do with economic opportunity the american people know that uh we we also know that the border crisis is completely of joe biden's making the numbers of uh cbp uh interactions have been rising every single month since joe biden took office it started out a hundred thousand a month it's up over two hundred thousand a month now um you're, and and joe biden is releasing most of them into the united states they're literally taking illegal aliens putting them on buses and planes and sending them uh around the the, the world there's ice air which is a private contractor that has been flying illegal aliens from the border into chicago and, and letting them into the country in chicago this i think is a big reason why joe biden's poll numbers are tanking why the democrats are starting to get very very nervous about 2022 remember donald trump won the presidency on immigration and if you democrats want to keep pushing this open border stuff and allow everybody in when we have a lot of problems here already and we don't necessarily have a lot of benefits from allowing in uh all of these illegal aliens i think it's going to be a rough 2022 for the democrats Okay, now I'm going to throw it over to Pixel. I find it so interesting, LCTF fan, how every time you say something, you're using it as like anti-Biden, like propaganda. It's it's very interesting. I'm going to uh, take it back to a more theoretical uh, thing about why you're having issues with American immigration. I actually agree um, with counterpoints in that um, there is a big thing in America where you have educational problems. Um, and I think where my version of assimilation and a lot of, uh, I guess, right wing version versions of assimilation is that in America, there is a very strong patriotic cultural identity. And not that I'm saying there needs to be compromise on that side, but the idea of what it means to be American kind of needs to be inclusive. Like if you want to have a multicultural society, there needs to be assimilation efforts from both sides of, um, 
like whatever cultural dichotomies you have, right? I hate that I said both sides, but you know what I mean. I'm sometimes I get muddled over my words. Um, but I, I think that's where the wider problem is in America, because you're going to have a lot of problems with immigrations if people keep calling them illegal aliens, if people keep othering uh, people of def- different ethnicities, people of different and genders. Thinking and so I, I, I really think that the shows. point was kind of missed in this conversation. But um, yeah, that's my final thoughts on this. Now I'm going to throw it over to Shu on head. Um, one point that like nobody brought up, head. um, that's, I think is really important when it comes to like Mexican immigration is just the fact that we need to do something about the drug war in general. Um, that's like a huge factor okay. of like why that shit happens. And I feel like we really need to do something about that. Um, and it's just, it's always thrown on the back burner. Like no one really talks about it. I feel like, um, but it's like a really important issue and, um, yeah, I don't know. Just our whole immigration system needs to be more focused on, more reformed. Um, like, I don't think, like, the wall is, like, more of a symbol than anything, honestly, because most illegal immigration, like, comes in legally, technically. Isn't that tr- I think that's right. Um, and then people, like, just stay here. So, yeah, I don't know. We just, yeah. <laughs> that's it. I've been learning most of the stream, so so I've just been sitting back. Okay, now we're gonna throw it over to the Turk. So I'm I'm really disappointed we didn't get to talk about horses more because we all know that ivermectin is a really good and positive Same. drug towards uh you know COVID nineteen. I think I even saw a tweet from Dylan Burns where he promoted the drug. So you know I you know I think we should definitely talk about that more. Uh, as far as you know the border crisis, yeah I. I'm a compassionate person. I would love for, and that's why I brought up the news story. It's like, if if none of those people that have, were reported as being removed have asylum, asylum claims, that's sad. We should be able to take all of them, right? And we should fund that going to, I think Vosh was talking about this a lot. But it's like, at what point do we start to stop spending money on other things? Because if we uh, quadrupled Never. our... Uh, asylum claims budget you know let's say it's that one it's like what program are you willing to sacrifice in order to help these haitians or uh just uh asylees into the country in general y'all have got to start giving a little in order to getting a little bit from the from a tax from a policy perspective and then as far as joe biden's concerned going to lecture fan it's like he knows this is here and he's handling it poorly that's a fact and his numbers are tanking because of it He's got to do something other than just get him out of the camp. He actually needs to say, Congress, do something about this, not just, you know, ban horses from the border. Okay, nice chicken nugget. And I mean, yeah, Turk, it, it, it was a pretty aggressive tactic that when I promoted the ivermectin. I mean, personally, like, I want to win 2022. And if uh, I, I think the more conservatives that uh, use ivermectin to defend from COVID, the better chances Democrats at have have at uh, winning in twenty. As long as it's the pill yeah. form and not the paste. Mm-hmm. We're gonna throw it over to uh, to Vosh. Yeah. Well, I mean, tax the rich and cut the military budget. That's my default answer to this question. And given how small the money we allot to immigration courts is, I think that's actually a It'd be a pretty good exchange there, you know, all together. Anyway, look, at the end of the day, this all comes down to what the American people want. Why did Donald Trump lose in 2020 in a historic defeat? It's because the American people knew that his anti-immigration status was bullshit. It's because the American people knew that his xenophobia and his uh, exclusionary behavior was un-American. And the American people knew. That there is, in fact, no legal obligation for asylum seekers to declare asylum at the first country they travel through on their way out of their home country. Just like the American people know that without a full enactment of due process, there is absolutely no way to know whether or not an asylum seeker has a legitimate claim, which is exactly why we should uphold our own legal institutions by giving them the opportunity to hold their day in the court. There has been a lot of misinformation spread in this panel itself. Uh, none of which is Twitter TOS, by the way, Uh, and the American people know that. And uh, my word to Republicans and to Donald Trump would be uh, that uh, things are looking pretty bad for you guys. 
unless you're willing to listen to the American people uh, on these critical issues. You know, it's, we're looking real bad 2022 unless we pump up that immigration court budget. But I mean, we'll see, you know, a sleepy Trump probably not going to act on that one. He's not in touch with what the people want. He's a East Coast billionaire media mogul folks not really keyed in to what american people want sorry okay now we're going to go on to the next topic but first everybody in chat once again i would appreciate if you went to the youtube channel d-y-l-e-n-b-u-r-n-s i should TV, do uh dylan burns tv on youtube we're pushing it really hard right trying now we're to trying to talk to the way lecture fan it costs you literally nothing if you want to support the channel after doing that sub don't know you all know it Primes are completely free, but they help me out a ton. We're going to go into the next topic, which is the Equality Act. The Equality Act, uh, or by its long title, to prohibit discrimination on the basis of sex, gender, identity, sexual orientation for other purposes, is a bill in the 117th Congress that has to uh, do with amending the Civil Rights Act to prohibit discrimination on the basis of sex, gender identity, uh, housing, uh, sexual orientation, etc., um, when it comes to federally funded programs, uh, jury service, and other things. Now, I assume, since it was the topic, you all researched the Equality Act yourself, and all have that, and you already mm -hmm. know what it's all about, mm -hmm. since it was one of the what, topics. What I was, was the to. bill number? Well, it's a constitutional amendment proposal. So. Okay. It's a constitutional amendment proposal. Yeah, I, I understand. Wait, are we talking it's about true, ERA, or... Not a good Equality start. Act. Oh, no. Equality oh, kind of do interchange with Gotcha. Oh, I'm thinking of the wrong. Oh. Yeah, that's why I'm. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, it was the amendment you, you proposed to us yes. to talk about. Sorry, sorry. The Equal Rights Amendment. I am completely. Okay, cool. It's. I know there's been a lot of progressive coming from the right, Dylan. I'm, I now understand. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. The Equal Rights Amendment, that was on me, is a constitutional amendment that will guarantee legal gender equality for men and women, according to equalrightsamendment.org. Obviously, not everybody agrees with that. Um, now, you should have all done research on that. This is the worst intro I've ever done. You should have all done research on that one. Take it away. I'll throw it to Aircraft Sparky. He probably knows the most about it. No, I probably don't know the most about it. I'm pretty <laughs> sure you probably know more about it than I do, but it's okay. Um, do we need this amendment? Um, hey, I'm okay with it as long as we actually we we make it look at things like uh, Title Seven and, and so forth and kind of mirror that because doing it based on gender, sex alone just isn't enough. Look, equal rights should be for everyone, and so we should actually include things like race, religion. Um, and, hey, I like the D.C. Oh, no. policy of you can't discriminate based on political affiliation as well. So if they were to amend all that, I'd fully support that. But doing it based solely on sex or identification of what you uh, – sure, you can go that route, but we need to actually include women in things like the draft. Um, just because, hey, equality. Yeah. Okay, next is going to be counterpoints. Yeah, so I can articulate the conservative hostility to this amendment, and I can I can v voice my own hostility to it. So basically, the Fourteenth Amendment already enshrines like due process of law, that like equality under the law. As a matter of fact, most like civil rights cases have been decided under the Fourteenth Amendment, and it's been interpreted pretty loosely in the courts. The problem with the Equal Rights Amendment is it does make like gender, sex, gender expression and all that kind of stuff like necessarily equal across the board. And the fear here, particularly for conservatives, is when it comes to religious institutions. If you're not allowed to discriminate based off of like sex, gender expression, uh, sexual identity, all that kind of stuff, then does that mean that like Orthodox Jewish folk have to preside over gay weddings? Does that mean that Catholics right. have to? Does that mean that, uh, you know, everybody has to? Uh, do uh, religious institutions or religious schools, do they have to accept trans uh, you know, trans employees. And while there sure. are plenty of religious uh, organizations that are very progressive and are starting to become accepting of LGBTQ folk, is this something that should be federally mandated? And even if the religious protections in the First Amendment are used to battle the language of this proposed amendment, the question is how how is that going to affect like the ability of these religious institutions to be sued when they don't provide equal services for LGBTQ folks. So then it becomes a, a question of like uh, religious power um, and the state's ability to interfere with religious institutions. So that would be my objection to it. However, if we do 
passed this in, uh, this uh, this amendment, then I want to play a Uno reverse card. I want women to be signed up for the military draft. I want women to be like uh, 50%, uh, like I want to institute 50% across the board, male, female employees. You got fit, you got 80% nurses, fuck that. We got 50% male nurses right now. You got 80%, uh, you know, school teachers or women, not, we got 50%, uh, you know, male, te- uh, male teachers now. So uh, basically if we're gonna go fucking all 19th Amendment authoritarian sexist on it, then I wanna go full fucking hog. And I'll leave it there. Okay. Now I'm going to throw it over to Lecture Fan. So the Equal Rights Amendment is dead uh, because that's it's been tried to be passed as a constitutional amendment since the 1920s, and it's been attempted to be ratified, I think, basically ever since the 1920s, and there's been some things. But it, it, my understanding is it's dead. It can't be ratified now. It didn't reach enough ratification. So I actually thought we were talking about the... Uh, the Equality Act, since that's actually recently passed Congress. But um, no, the big problem with the Equal Rights Amendment, the reason that it never got ratified, the reason that it's dead is because it would basically erase all of the um, protections that uh, the feminist movement has got for women. So, for example, um, it would eliminate Title IX uh, equal funding for women's sports. It would you it would eliminate the WIC program for women, infants and children. That would be considered illegal under that it would basically do all of these things where we've got all these laws right now that are designed to benefit women and it would basically get rid of all of those so um that seems to be the main reason it it failed is because it basically un undoes all of all of those things because those are those would be considered oh well true you've got a law here that says you know women infants and children can get you know special funding to pay for needs and necessities when it's a single mom with a baby well that's that's a law that's based on sex so that's illegal now that's totally unconstitutional um same with title IX funding for for women's sports and and the the list is almost endless uh, in terms of uh, things that it would invalidate. So that's why it's failed. It's not going anywhere. It's dead. Um, it's not going to happen. Okay. Um, I do want to clarify that the reason why it was chosen is that one year ago it was ratified by the Virginia General Assembly. So that's why there's increased interest in it because it is being ratified on multiple state governments. Can I go next then? On yeah. a federal level, though, you could say maybe it's dead. Um, no, that, yeah, that, there is a debate about that. My my understanding is that the the consensus though is you can the, Virginia can still ratify it, but it's not going to ever actually amend the constitution. But you're right that there is still like interest in it. Okay, now I'm well, going to throw it to. Can I go next then? Because that's states. part of my point. Okay, sure. Yeah, so Rat, like I can it. cherry pick a lot of these topics that have been brought up, and uh, first I'll say often say that Texas has already ratified the amendment, and as a true blooded tr- Texan. You know, I love my state, so, like, I have to go with what they said. Uh, I would say, though, that it would be good to have a, you know, public discourse about the amendment today, because if we're trying to ratify it today, let's see what all the states today have to say about it. However, I am really interested in the legal gymnastics that would be required to pass a bill or an amendment that was given a timetable that is passed other states have rescinded their uh, ratifications of it. Other states have ratified it past the date. So I'm really curious what the mental gymnastics and all of that really is. But I, I, I could talk about a lot of these different topics, but know that as a Texan, I unfortunately do go with what Texas said. Now, if there was some confusion of if it was the Equality Act or the Equal Rights Amendment, uh, I'm fine with the conversation expanding to that as well. Uh, since th- there's interest in both of those. So I'm going to throw it next over to Pixel. Um, so I, 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 I find it very difficult to speak on the particular legalities of like the American political system. I think it's very interesting that LCTFN uh, was like, uh, it, it, it went very, uh, this protects women, when I think that the amendment itself is to increase uh, protections for women under the constitution, at least in some sort of like tokenistic um, way. Um, I, I think it's, I mean, I, th- I think it should be ratified, even if it's just tokenistic at this point. Um, 
uh, then I'm happy to open the conversation up to one that is, I guess, more about gender equality in, in, in the US. But as for like Australia, we have like the Sex Discrimination Act um, of 1984, where basically um, everything in the amendment, uh, well, similar or comparative, um, uh, distinctions that are like in the Equal Rights Amendment um, were put into law here in Australia. So just for context, that's my okay. intro. Okay, uh, throw it over to Shuan Head. Um, so I actually think the Equal Rights Amendment is bullshit. Uh, I do not agree with it because listen, all right. Oh no. Back, like we could have been, I've said this before, but as women, we could have been home baking pies and shit, oh, no. right? And now we got to go to war and die for Raytheon. Okay, we got to get drafted into war. That's bullshit. I... <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. I'm an egalitarian, and um, anything that makes people more equal under the law, I'm totally fine with. i trying to figure out anything just I would have a problem with. Baiting the trad husband coon. I don't know. Chat. Um. I just don't like I researched the Equal Rights Act before this and I was like, what am I gonna even say about this? Um but yeah, no, I'm it's fine. I don't really have a problem. Yeah. Got it. Now we're gonna throw it over to Turk. I already went. Oh, I thought oh yeah, you you specific I'm just going in order in my head. I, I missed uh Joe. Sorry. <sighs> Yeah, it's funny to me. Um, I personally think at the federal level, um, we're not gonna we're not gonna see this pass. Um, one of the things that conservatives had their power level on is the power of Christian evangelical women. They've been at the forefront of fighting the ERA for decades. And the two and, and the two groups to note that you can thank, which is a very big portion of their electorate, is the Concerned Woman for America, and then another. I think it's called the Freedom caucus or something like that its name escapes me right now but basically what what Caw. happens is there's a few arguments that they make one of them that was the, the one of the reasons that they argued is that it would create a situation where women would have to enter the draft or go into combat duty that was their argument as to why they're opposing the era another argument they made was abortion and even right now you have debbie lesko of arizona saying i'm just gonna like now, the quote memorized, if ratified, the ERA would be used by pro-abortion groups to undo pro-life legislation and lead to more abortions and taxpayer-funded abortions. This is straight out of the evangelical Christian handbook. Um, the only reason why they fight the ERA and conservatives fight the ERA so hard is because, one, evangelical Christians are a large part of their electorate. Two, evangelical Christian women are a very large and vocal part of their electorate. Again, like an organization that has been at the forefront, I'm gonna say it over and over in this conversation, is Concerned Women for America. Right now, the head of it's Penny Nance. It, she just basically peddles the exact same talking points. Oh, it's against religious beliefs. Oh, it's, a, it's gonna have abortion at like abortion wholesale and all these like just same, just religious arguments and religious bullshits. And then they make the argument of like, oh, well, there's already protections for women. So why do we need the ERA? It's just a bunch of like, and again, like Concerned Conservatives won't challenge this because they know if they go with the ERA and if support of the ERA that abandons that portion of the electorate. There's a little bit of misinformation around the ratification and the arguments within that. Like, yes, 38 states have ratified the Equal Rights Amendment, but that doesn't um, really tell the whole story because five states, Kentucky, Nebraska, Tennessee, Idaho, and South Dakota rescinded that. And that was from some pressure from Concerned Women for America. And the idea of like, we don't wanna be optically good at fighting it, just something to think about as well. All the states currently that oppose the ERA also have a strong presence of Concerned Women for America. So. There's a lot to that. And also, the argument of time is bullshit. The 27th Amendment was ratified over 200 years after it was introduced. So we, we don't give a shit about precedent there. But that's all I got for now. Uh, Vosh. Yeah, I think it's good. Uh, because I hate women. There are so many ways right. in which women are legally privileged, from the draft to police procedure to uh, 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 behavior in court. Um, to uh, arguments made by lawyers, to, God, so many things, all right? And it's time, honestly, we wiped the smug fucking grin off their faces because this shit has gone too far, okay? 
Step one to gender abolition is making sure that the government can't legally get away with differentiating procedure based on the genitals of the people they're applying it to. If conservatives want a hardcore fearmonger over that because they think it's interrupting some sort of utopian ideal of the nuclear family, I'm just, I, I, I don't get it. I don't understand what you want. You really think that the absence of this law is going to prevent all the economic factors that have put women in the workplace? It's not, it's, it's not happening anyway, okay? And, I mean, like, especially since, like, Christ, you know? The way, like, uh, this gets argued over from time to time, you'd think that a lot of conservatives are, like, these heady advocates for men's rights, in which case they should be huge proponents of this bill. I don't know. Oh, uh, uh, um, additionally, uh, not only do I think that we should all be able to be drafted, uh, I think that women should be frontliners for the next solid quarter millennia to compensate for the past one, you know? Uh, I feel like there's a, a bit of a debt that they owe to our brave servicemen uh, that they need to pay it back, honestly. So, before, We're fucking based. quick, can't, quick <laughs> question. So, raise of hands, who agrees with it? I'm sorry, Dylan. I just, there's been a lot of confusion here. Who, who agrees with the ERA? I do not. So I do not. Bosch, myself, Joe, I, I, Smick, Pixel. Okay, cool. Wait, Although what? you don't, Joe. I thought you. I thought you did, Joe. I have it well, for. I, I don't support it for other reasons. I have nothing to do with dumbass conservative takes. Okay, can can I? Yeah, can I? Joe uh, wants articulate? only women to be drafted. Based. Yes, we we need to inverse. Uh, you know the where my community and Vosh's community overlap is uh, in trans inclusionary radical misogyny. Uh, we we love you know, trans folk, but we hate women. So that that's pretty much where we're at. So, well, so if I get that point, well, I want to explain this really quick. So basically the way that this can be revived, because I, I did watch, uh, you know, 20 minutes, which means that I'm an expert now, um, is that they can technically, so 37, I believe the current count is 37 states have ratified and they need 38. 33. They have 33. Okay, well then, since John Oliver talked about it, four conservative states rescinded their vote. No, the, it's the, the so problem John, is, is that dude, the number is okay. Can I? Let me, can I can Joe, I no, I love you. No, no, no. Can I? I'm not going to use the information like that. And just John Oliver. Stop. I want to hear the chronology. John Oliver isn't even American. I. Okay, number one, I think that's enough women jokes for one day. Okay, we're gonna. Let's stop that moving forward. I don't need to regulate chat like this. Uh, and we're going to go counter, and then Joe can respond to it. I'm writing Turk's name down. Okay. Joe. my I, I love you dearly, like a, like a brother from another mother. But it doesn't matter how many fucking states are needed, because my point stands, which is basically that the expiration date set in 1972 can be changed by Congress at any point. They can literally just say, hey, we're going to give a new timetable for ratification, and we now have 38 states, and we're going to ratify it. So this is still possible. And by the way, you know, maybe John Oliver is wrong because he's a snaggletooth fucking Brit bonger. I'll go ahead and check out when the fucking special was, but at the time of shooting, there were 37 states. If there were four that rescinded their vote, then that's totally fine. Okay? And so that's where I wanted to explain to folks that at, at the time of this conversation coming up, there was we were one state away from ratification and all congress would need to do is extend like literally just I pass like a you know a general a uh, comic, law saying like we extended it. it and we need one more state so this was very close to actually happening but it wasn't and then i'll leave that for all the religious shit that i brought up for us to fight about so i'll shut the fuck up for now the issue is that although 38 states ratified it, five states rescinded that ratification. So then the legal question is, is that do we acknowledge, like, it, true, 38 states ratified it, but five states rescinded. So although you have the 38 ratification, I thought it was you cute. also must include the five states that rescinded. So even, and that's where the legal argument for me kind of falls apart, because now I would argue that you need to compensate for the states that rescinded, which were Idaho, South Dakota, Tennessee, Nebraska, and Kentucky, and then get five additional states instead of those states. But the problem is the states that are left are all controlled by Republican legislatures and also have high representation of Christian evangelicals who are against the ERA. So the ratification of that in those states is going to be very, very difficult. Listen, this is, not, this is not the first time that the Commonwealth has bitterly disappointed the world, and it won't be the last. Okay. Turk. 
Yeah. And, and going to Joe's statements here, it's like, so I, I think earlier it was either this year or last year, the house passed what Connor was saying, where we should change the goalposts and say, we can ratify all of this, uh, up to some unknown date that happened right or am i misthinking this? yeah so they they passed so they were able to get rid of the date extension but then senate was just like okay so senate didn't trump's pass a president it, the house did though right the house passed it but the senate didn't touch it okay so so as it currently stands according to the current timetable that was passed back in the 70s they didn't have enough votes in the states to ratify it mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So we're on the same page that as it stands, it doesn't exist. And we, well, should, probably, we should probably talk about it as 2021 Americans. And I think we have, I've, I've read some of your data, Joe, that you posted. We have liberalized significantly for where, where we were in the 70s. And there is a strong uh, pull towards, you know, giving equal rights to the sexes. I'll be very Which they already much. have, by the way. That's not necessarily true. We all, yeah, we already have that. That's no, but the that, thing. again, that's that's the argument that they make, and again, the argument that that right wingers make is because it's backdoor pro life. It's just backdoor but, but anti pro. Well, you you keep hold on, hold on. They, Joe, they, Joe. Like, like they don't even hide it. The GOP Joe. doesn't even hide it. That's what Joe, they say. Here, I blanked the, out for like two minutes, and I am lost. There are several states that actually passed the Equal Rights Amendment in their state constitutions, and then the first thing they did with their Equal Rights Amendment is mandate no restrictions on abortion. So you're There's acting as if that's a that crazy thing. The argument, one of which is in Maine. Do you know the it's, other? It happened. Yes, I do. Yeah, the, just two states out of 38? That is not a valid reason for no, a not, Shoot, Are not, you listening no, to my not, stream not the and the Discord that ratified, call? ratified it in the U.S. Constitution. I'm talking about states that put it into their state constitution. That's what I'm saying. And only two states did what your fear was. Penny Nance mentioned that in an interview. If you want that interview, it was in 2020, or I think it was like OAN or something like that. I'll put it in the in the chat later. It's OAN Penny Nance's is the argument. Most responsible news source. Yeah, Penny Nance is crazy. If you want another crazy, it's Wendy Wright, who was a previous president of the organization. Like the, it's, they're wild. They're wild. And again, like, okay, so if I if I give you charity and saying that what you said was true, right? We have to. So are we just not going to do that and be afraid of that because two out of the thirty eighth and initially ratified it? Now, mind you, five rescinded, so the number is actually thirty three. No, two yeah, out of thirty three. No, that's no, enough to no. warrant a fear. Two Joe, out of thirty three is enough to warrant oh my, a fear that all the people are all going to do that. Can I address this because literally online oh it's saying. It's Joe saying Mama. that the federal the federal government doesn't recognize the the rescinding of their of the ratification. So right, literally online that, it says they don't recognize it. So they have the it, 38 state quorum in order to get it passed by Congress. But again, Congress Ruth Bader Ginsburg, it, sorry. Ruth yeah, Bader no, Ginsburg argued this as well, is that we have to acknowledge the rescinded states. So just because they ratified the rescinded later, and that ought to be recognized. That's why that that's why there's a semantical argument on numbers of it being 38 or 33. Uh, and that's okay. what would be used ought as opposition. To, ought to or is, because that, that's an important distinction, because that's if they the actually argument. haven't been technically rescinded, then it's right. still possible to be passed. Right, but I'm saying in 2021, uh -huh. the evangelical Christians who are, who, again, the forefront of this argument, I'm going to use evangelical Christian women, so that's the group that's fighting this. This is the, this is the, the little part of the electorate that's fighting this no, the hardest. lots of people don't like it. Lots of it's people, lots of events. people think no, that we should have no, women it's shelters. It's overwhelmingly lots popular. It's overwhelmingly popular. The, again, oh, yeah, getting I, I banning, banning women's shelters is overwhelmingly pop. Banning WIC uh, more, program more, is over. Like, again, on. I've hear, I've heard these points before. I know where they go. They're just backdoor. They're backdoor pro anti pro, pro abortion. I, I get it. Like I understand, I understand where this argument comes from, and I recognize that. But I'm just saying the argument has to be better. Right? Why are you like, acting like you're this genius expert on the? Because I right gave you stuff. I gave you guys shit, and none of you fucking read it. Okay, Joe, I can I you ask you this? That's my argument. <laughs> Joe, can I ask you this question though? So, so take it back, Joe. You said a definitive. Absolute. By and large, this panel didn't read anything that I sent. Okay, Joe, can I ask you a question though? Be yes. Because basically, uh, let, let's just entertain. Well, I mean, she she's a very femme tradcon woman. That's what femme tradcon women do. So, uh, so I have a question for you, which is like, what are the the fears from religious people? Are that in the new day and age with neo trans uh, uh, neo pronouns, uh, trans non binary folk, like all that kind of stuff? 
what the way that this law would be used either at the state or the federal level would be to impose certain demographic employees that would go against the uh, the the religious values of certain conservative organizations like Catholic schools like, uh, you know, madrasas yes. or, or, or anything like that. Um, and then basically, even if even if it wasn't like even if it wasn't recognized eventually, because there, there are some religious protections in the First Amendment, um, this would still leave them open to suit. So I guess my question is, like, do you there are think a lot of specifics that rel to this. conservative I religious institutions have about. an obligation to employ um, LGBTQ folk and that this should be federally recognized and federally enforced? I believe that in its current state, and this might, it's going to feel like a pivot because I, it, it is. I believe <laughs> that I'm just, I'm just showing you, I'm just showing you how this made moving forward. Showing how this sausage is made moving forward. I believe uh, that the only way to fight, like this fight is best had in getting five new states. And then we can have a better argument at the federal. The problem is, and the one thing that, again, that you, acknowledge and I'm recognizing is that this is sort of the thing that they're going to fight. But the problem that I have is that there's not enough evidence to support the the fear that they have. Because again, like one of the things that um, Penny Nance argues, and the reason why I'm mentioning Penny Nance, because she's the president of Concerned Women for America, I believe that the rhetoric and the practices and beliefs of your president go trickle down to your organization because they're speaking on behalf of that is that she says things along the lines of this is going to make us acknowledge that that like these these lies that men can so be women doing, and women can be men it's also going to create lies that like or, or it's like kind of like but, sort of let me phrase this I... the truth that boys are boys will but be Joe, boys Joe, are before you can before yeah, you yeah. continue really so okay yeah, so I guess my I guess my question is so my my fear, all right, I'm not a religious person individually. Okay? I'm just not. So so this isn't like a super high priority for me, but <laughs> but we live in a liberal society which means that we tolerate other people with different foundational beliefs. Mm -hmm. A lot of religious people, um particularly like Catholic conservatives and Orthodox Jewish folk are not fans of, you know, LGBTQ folk. So yeah. my my question is, can you can anybody like like I'll put you off the hook and somebody else cannot pivot? <laughs> Do you think that it should be federally mandated for religious institutions to employ LGBTQ folk and that this should be a part of the ERA and it should be enforced? Of course, can, lots of leftists want that. Of course, if lo they can lots make, of leftists want if that. If they can make a justified argument as to why the employment of LGBTQ folks is against their religious beliefs and they can mm -hmm. prove that it does not cause demonstrative harm, then... They but, can have but that we fight. know, but, but we know, matter. we know it causes harm. We, no, yeah, we, we know, know it causes, causes harm. harm. So there's my, there's my answer. Let me, let me is that the argument about like the exclusion <laughs> of these people because of our religion I mean, it is doesn't bullshit? Doesn't matter, Joe. Let me, as as written with the ERA, it's about the sex, not the gender of the person. No, so they they have gender no, expression. No, they, no, 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 Turk, Turk. You know for a fact, conservatives do not separate sex and gender. We know this, it, but 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 no, not just I'm that. It says gender expression in the ERA. Go ahead and read it out loud. I'll read, let me look look it up. Yeah, be, because lines. I almost get, I almost guarantee you that it, that section it involves one, gender and gender expression. It's three lines. Section one: Equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on the account of sex. Section two: Congress shall have the power to enforce by appropriate legislation the provisions of the, this article. Section three: mm -hmm. This amendment shall take effect two years after the date of ratification. So three there's sentences. no gender there. Right. Okay. Let, let me say what I believe that sex and gender are inherently connected, which is why they use that for their arguments. But if you were to put this in a court of law, you could not use that separation as defined by this amendment. They're using that for their argument right now in 2021, the Turk. That's the argument they are using. So, here's the question I have. Why do people want this? Because we do already have Supreme Court cases that say sex discrimination is illegal under the Equal Protection Clause. We've also got the Civil Rights Act that prohibits sex discrimination. So what, what is the big benefit of, of having this? Women's equality necessarily requires reproductive and bodily autonomy and without control over women's bodies oh so you're saying it is about abortion women cannot participate. so you are saying it's about women abortion. cannot participate as full equal citizens in this country i'll say this again because you felt like you had something important to say and i disregarded it so i'm just going to say it again women's equality necessarily requires reproductive and bodily autonomy okay, so it's about and without, abortion yeah 
women's equality we can do this for as long as it takes women's equality necessarily requires reproductive and bodily autonomy and without control over our bodies women cannot participate as full equal citizens in this country that's and, and abortion, can right? i can i correct myself so you can say uh, that's anti-abortion but i know that argument exists and you and even if we went down this rabbit hole lecture fan you'd lose it but we can have this okay. we can debate this as much as you want but this is not the hill you want to die on oh. Uh, counter, you can say it, and I'll probably actually wrap it up after this. We can make this a okay. shorter topic since people aren't super engaged. Turk, you'll be the first one to do outros, I promise. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to clarify real quick for those at home who are confused about what I was reading. I was actually um, l linked to the Equality Act, so I was misreading the Equality Act as the uh, the constitutional amendment, so I was misreading yeah, it's, it. It's a rough thing, yeah. Okay. Uh, Turk? Is this outros or just general uh, you, statements? You, you can make a general statement. Then we'll do outros. And no, no. So it's like, Joe, you keep characterizing me as this dumb Republican that can't understand the differentiation between sex and gender. Mm -hmm. The Equal Rights Act, as written, mm -hmm. has that distinction in writing. So, so do when you, you go to a court of law? That's that's the law. So then, do you then what? We, okay, let me ask this question a bit more directly. Do you support? evangelical christians and specifically evangelical christian women's argument why are you such a bigot why are you such a religious bigot man jeez I'm a Roman Catholic Catholic you're dumb dumb fuck. i know more about religion than a lot of you individuals so let's not jump down that rabbit hole do you i'm a devout roman catholic hole. systematic devout. theology come on do you want to do that rabbit hole joe come on be real be real i'll be real as much yeah. as you want in the court we can have a we can have this talk for as long as it I'd takes i'd love to answer your question truthfully Truthfully, would you then support the opposition to evangelical Christian women who are at the forefront of opposition to the RA if you believe that sex and gender are separate? I think as a 2021 society, we have the right to have that conversation generally. And there's likely, according to the data you showed in those the things you asked us to read, the, the court of popular opinion shows that we are a more liberal society and the voices coming from that particular group probably don't represent the bigger people. So that's why it's I the majority like, like this is again, this is a powerful electorate I within the GOP. That, and that's why they I have supported have every single Republican president. They were able to get a, a woman governor one. I forget the state off the top of my head is something Ivy some or something ivory. I forget her name. Like they are a powerful electorate. So by you as a right winger, a powerful influence in society, BLM, there's all sorts of other movements. So Christian like, evangelical women have... are at the core of the GOP. So let's have the conversation. Let's as I have the conversation. I'm asking you, are you, are you Christian going to go against woman. one of their largest electorates in order for this to go? Again? Like you didn't answer that. Would you oppose? specifically the christian evangelical I, right i would support women. my current representative and what he would go in my state representative when it comes to actually passage of the bill as i said earlier i believe that texas agreed with the era as it was written in the 70s and i kind of stand with that right now i would like so to would, see so you're saying you would oppose no i I'll, the yes, concerned I women for of america in as Texas, I as I which has the stand, largest representation in the entire right. country. As it currently stands, I would oppose to what they're saying. I would love to have the conversation so right. that as a general public, we can pass it or not pass it. Well, there we, there we go. Then bully Penny and Ants. You could probably platform her. She, yeah, no one really likes her. Yeah, well, I'm on this platform, and you said I shouldn't have yeah. one, so shut up. I mean... Okay, so I think on that note, uh, we're done with this topic. So we're going to wrap it up to outros. Uh, and for outros, if you want, if you don't have a lot to say about this, you can talk about any other topic if you wanted to give some thoughts of something you missed. And also, of course, shout yourself out. We're going to start in the top left-hand corner with Aircraft Sparky. Oh, when it comes to the Equal Rights Amendment, um, yeah, I, it, it's, too, it's too general. We already have laws that, that give, give women... Um, basically protections and everything and laws can be removed easier than amendments. So there is an argument there for that, but I, I don't agree with it. Uh, although I would like to say um, she on head had the most base take uh, the trad wife life, best life. Uh, and I'm sure she was joking and that's okay. It, it was, it was fun. Thank you for that. I appreciated that. 
Um, I'm Eric Rasmark. You can find me on YouTube and Twitter. Uh, and uh, Twitch, sorry, uh, youtube.com slash aircraftsparky, twitch.tv slash aircraftsparky. Um, I talk about all kinds of things. Um, yeah, thank you for having me on. That's it. Got you. Thank you very much. Now we're going to throw it over to Counter. Most globally aware American. Yeah, my name is Connor. I run a YouTube channel named Counterpoints. I am a science fiction, political, and philosophy nerd. I'm a Marine veteran, a law enforcement veteran. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, you can type in Counterpoints. Do comments Africa spelling into YouTube. You can find me my there. My career would uh, not just survive like 11K, doing 11.5, so having lots of fun. And then uh, to summarize my perspectives, uh, everybody at home should Google the Rigel report, R-I-E-G-L-E -E report. Uh, that's basically us selling dual use chemicals to Iraq. They should Google foreign internal defense. It's a way to prop up nations without invading them and destroying them. They should Google uh, Chinese demographic replacement rate it is currently worse than Europe. So I think China is a paper tiger. They should also Google the Chinese uh, construction bubble. Uh, China is currently within the past three weeks having one of the worst real estate catastrophes of its existence and it's going to have large economic impacts. So I want everybody to factor that into their calculus about whether or not we're going to be cucked for the next century. And then all childless women over the age of 25 have to serve in the United States infantry. Um, so that's my final policy proposal. And uh, thank you. So yeah, check me out. Hope you all have a great night. Wonderful. Now I'm going to throw it over to Joe Lewis. Yeah, um, you can follow me at twitch.tv slash Joe Lewis, the O being a zero. Um, I like the conversation. This was really fun. I think that, um, broadly speaking, women should have control over their bodies. And it's very unfortunate that they don't have the proper representation in the point of opposition, which is in the GOP. Um, it's very, it's very unfortunate. I think like if I'm thinking about a pragmatic thing, we need to get five new states on board. If I were to think of five new states off the top of my head that you could easily, not easily, it'd be a challenge, um, would be Arizona, Georgia, the Carolinas, um, possibly Florida and Missouri. I said a couple more and also probably Kentucky. Um, I think that broadly speaking, this is something that should be fought because it's still there. We can get rid of the date which we did that stupid deadline but again we already have an amendment that took 200 years to get ratified so there's a clear argument there but then also just make the state argument and have so many states ratified that it's impossible for the gop to ignore and they need to expand their electorate and anyway and i think expanding their electorate means abandoning one of the strongest which is christian evangelical women Okay, well, I'm going to throw it over to Pixel Smixel. Also, I love your lighting, by the way. I never get to say that, and I've been meaning to. I love it your is lighting. very nice lighting. Thanks. Yeah, it makes up for my dull personality. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Pixel Smixel. Everyone calls me Pix. I cover the news from like 4.30 a.m. Eastern time, if I'm talking to Americans. Um, I, yeah, I cover global, Australian, American news. Um, I, my background is in forensic psychology. Um, I am a Stargate nerd. I am currently on a bit of a philosophy binge because I didn't get to cover much of that in my university degree. And I'm learning a lot of that on stream right now. Um, uh, it's some of my general takes on the stuff that has happened tonight is, uh, women's rights are good. Immigration is good. Access to abortion is good. Um, and yeah, this has been an interesting conversation. Thanks again for having me on. And yes, please come subscribe to my channel. Please do so. Uh, <laughs> if, if she wants to get off that, that giant rock with spiders, she should have the option. <laughs> We're now going to throw it over to Lecture Fan. Uh, thanks for having me on, Dylan. It's been a long time since I've been on the Hippy Dippy podcast. It was good to make another appearance. I'm a little bit confused by by Joe Lewis saying that, oh, don't worry, this isn't about abortion. That's just this argument by white evangelical women, and I'm not sure why the hatred for white evangelical women is so Never said white. There. Those are your but, words. Joe? But, um, no. But, but so then, so then I said, okay, so we've already got, you know, we've already got all these laws that prohibit sex discrimination. What did it, and, he, and then he says, oh, it's about abortion, which I thought he said was like the, the argument that not, I don't know, that, that threw me for a loop there. Anyway, if you guys want to come to the only Twitch, one of the only Twitch streams, used, maybe used to be now just one of the only Twitch streams that's still connected to reality and reason and facts and evidence and treating people with love and kindness. It's twitch.tv slash lecture fan, LCTR fan. I've also got a fire Twitter, as Joe said. 
Um, so, yeah, thanks a lot. Okay. I'm going to throw it over to Turk now. Uh, so going to the to original topic of the Equal Rights Amendment, I think that as a 2021 society, we should probably have that conversation as it was written or have Congress rewrite and decide that. I think it'd be a good conversation to have because I would honestly love to say, you know, Connor, your points are good. We should debate those. And Joe, your points are good. We should debate those. And we should collectively as a society say that as we write it in 2021, this is what the ERA is and what we should vote for. I think that's a good based take and as a, as a society it would be good because you know there people like to characterize turk here as a far-right extremist dude and it's like no i'm a moderate conservative not like uh connor here i am a republican conservative and it's like yes i think women should be treated equally under the constitution as written but I would like to learn more about what all ramifications that has to what current laws are on the books, because I don't know if we know all of that information. I think we need to have that conversation in order to go forward and be a better society. So it's like, y'all can follow me over at YouTube, The Turk. I do science and tech, stream deck, or steam deck, Jesus, not the stream deck, but yeah. Now we're going to throw it over to Vosh Vidya, Irish laddie. Big streamer, man. Thank you. Uh, I uh, 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 I think the state should make it so that the they make a man get an abortion every time a woman gets one. That's pretty much the only horse I have in this race. Don't follow okay. my stream. Yes, follow mine instead. Uh, Shu. Okay, hi. Uh, I'm Shu One Head. I'm a social democrat um, and a populist. And uh, I make videos sometimes when I want to on my YouTube channel. Go check them out. I'm going to be making a new one very soon. And I'm also making a website soon, so that's going to be fun. Um, and yeah, I'm sorry that I didn't have much to add on that last one. I looked up the Equal Rights Act. And I was like, I don't know what to say about this. But um, yeah, this was very fun. I need to do more of these, practice more of this. So thank you so much for inviting me. And it was nice to talk to a lot of you guys who I've never met before. So it was nice meeting you. And yeah. Wonderful. I want to thank everybody for coming on. Uh, I'm excited to see so many different stars here today that uh, I hope are able to get a few followers out of this and get a little bit of support. And um, one second. CTV? Oh, yay. <laughs> if he's, if he's going to start yelling at everybody, I'm out. <laughs> CTV? Counterpoints. What's Why? up? Why is it that you would assume that right off? I mean, do you have a guilty conscience or something? Can you no, not, you didn't. Can you listen? Not I know you oh, had what, an emergency, what, what, but you were supposed what, to be at my house with a speedo and you didn't show up. So excuse, you know what the fuck? Excuse me for my dog developing pancreatitis. Yeah, you're excused. Okay, now, <laughs> so why is it that you would assume that right off the bat that I would just start yelling? Is it because you in fact have a guilty conscience? Is this a do you need to be yelled at? Counterpoints. I, I'm well, assuming so. You know what? There's another person out there. Right, that currently possesses something that will, in fact, be mine. Does anybody know who that is? If you don't know, I'll let you know. As a matter of fact, Vosh knows because Vosh couldn't hold up the fucking tenets of the title to fucking begin with, right? So, Destiny, nothing but love for you, brother, but you're holding something that's actually mine. Oh my God. It's mine, destiny. and I'm coming for it, right? So, I hope you're ready. Because by the time I'm done with you, I'm going to send your ass running back to Nebraska. Okay? And with that said, CTV out. Uh, that. Anyway, thank you so much. We're going to raid Gabby. How did he break in? He, did he uh, yeah, he I hacked know. I don't know. The, he he, the he has the hacker code. He, 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 dealt with, he dealt with my guards. At, 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 this at, shit is so hey, corny. I, I love this. it. I, I'm going to send the authorities here. after that man. I'm sending you all to Gappy. See you later. All right. Okay. Stream's over. <laughs> all right. Thanks everybody for coming on. I appreciate it. Y'all take care. Catch you. Goddamn hey, We got to build the lore. It. Okay. We got to build the lore. I, I, appreciate I, it. Um, I appreciate it. I was just fucking terrified. <laughs>
Okay. Y'all have a good one, okay? Connor, Connor was so excited to, to come on here tonight. All right. I said goodbye. Goddamn wrestling shit. The funny thing is, I actually still do have the belt. The one that was given to me. Like, I didn't mail it back, so... I'm like the shadow title holder or something, you know? Like a zombie, hippy-dippy champion, kind of. It's a nice belt. 